Hello, 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 hello. It is Wednesday. I was got confused whether it is, whether it is Tuesday or Wednesday, but it is Tuesday, uh, Wednesday. <laughs> um, yeah, it is Tuesday. Hope you had a great day so far. Maybe your your day just started. Maybe it's been going on for a while now. Hope so far it's been great. Let's uh, go into this uh, this stream today. Today we're gonna do something familiar. Uh, we're gonna do the same that we've done for the last few streams. I think for the last full two weeks. I don't even know really, but uh, yeah. Hello. So. As you can see right there, you can see what we're going to do today. First of all, of course, the 30 minute daily quick sketch is a um, it's a daily quick sketch, meaning we, of course, have to do it daily, which means I already have an idea what I want to do. I want to do it as quickly as possible so I can have as much time as possible to work on this dude right there. The problem is, <laughs> problem is like if, if I want to point there, I kind of have to adjust because I have to point like in it to my monitor kind of oh I can actually point to my uh right where I need to to point to I've almost almost but um yeah so yeah we're gonna do that afterwards we will today as you can see in the YouTube title at least or in Twitch as well I think um we will um finish the laurels we're gonna continue the laurels we've started yesterday and yeah that's what we're going to do today, and hopefully, hopefully, I planned on finishing it um, on what is it on uh, tomorrow, so that we can then, so that I can then render it on maybe Friday or so. I'm not going to stream on Friday. I think I had streamed last week on Friday, but I'm not going to do it this week. Uh, this week, I'll only stream, uh, or at least, yeah. So I'm going to stream tomorrow as well, of course, as always, um, and then. Hopefully we can finish the whole image tomorrow. Um, if uh, We'll see how far we get with the laurels today. I think we're going to finish them. I'm fairly confident. Maybe we can even work on finishing the whole image so that it's perfect and we don't have to change anything. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the, the goal today so that I can then render it. Maybe even... Uh, I don't think I can render it tomorrow. I mean, uh, yeah, tomorrow morning before we start. Um, but yeah, I think... I think we're um, we're on a good path. Um, if we, hmm, so I'm just going through everything that we need to do. So we we have done the, almost the full model. Once we finished the laurels, the last part that is missing. Oh yeah, I just wanted to add one more thing to the sculpt, which shouldn't take long, and the rest is pretty simple. So um, yeah, so the first part will be. Um, 30 minute quick sketch which we're going to go into right now and there you go and then we will um yeah we're going to do we're going to finish the laurels and then we can go ahead and uh see how far we can go like how far we can push it to push it today um i am fairly confident that we can finish the laurels today and apply the shader i'm just going to use the usual shader maybe i'm going to add some more surface imperfections to it um but yeah we'll see so first of all of course 30 minute quick sketch blender isn't or isn't even open yet <laughs> still have to open it there it is okay so let me just quickly, what do I even need? Let me see if I can, I have a few models that I've never used before or models that I don't even remember I have. I just want to see, I have a actually like a, um, a, an idea already, but I was looking for, I want to see if I can actually save some time by grabbing one of my, um, one of my models that I have here. I don't want to use a Hornet. Do I have some sort of full body dude or something? Uh, fossil, no, giant tortoise, that's not what I wanted. Hmm. Oh, welcome back, Gracian. Hope you enjoyed your day so far. Um, yeah, I'm glad. Uh, that's uh, nice to hear that you can learn from my uh, my videos. Um, so yeah, so currently we're working on these uh, on this on this one piece. Once we're done with that, um. 
we'll try to or i want to do i like i have like a whole lot of ideas what we could do um after we've finished this um, this piece which will be very very likely this week maybe even tomorrow um and yeah so next week will probably be something more variety me like more variety i think um i want to go into different topics i just want like the last few weeks i've only worked on this model or on this piece because i want to finish it for the competition um for yeah next week we'll 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 i'll focus more on discovery and learning this one was just more about showing my whole workflow for the benchmark project for this year basically <laughs> which uh took how long is it 30 probably like 35 uh parts but um yeah so i'm, ha I'm glad that you uh can enjoy these ones as well if you always if you have questions at any time you can always ask me i mean yeah ask me and if you have any criticism i'm always open for criticism as well if it's uh what is it um productive or no constructive don't hold back okay i want to make it as enjoyable for you as possible okay so do i have some sort of person i have a t-rex skeleton but i don't think i can use that because it's can i hmm so i used it before but i don't really like a skeleton because i want to have like a full body we could sculpt the full body around the skeleton but then you can probably like very easily see that it's a t-rex i kind of want to make it more ominous you don't really know what it's supposed to be we have a whale skeleton mm, i think i'm just gonna model what i wanted to do i think that's the easiest the easiest way to do it um base mesh nope yeah i need my roberto of course he's gonna be in the in the foreground being scared of what's in front of him okay <laughs> let me just make a new folder for this today's uh, quick sketch and then we can start quick sketch there you go number 108 There you go. Let's make a new. Oh no, I didn't. I don't need any folders. There you go. Okay, perfect. So let me remove this and this. We don't need it. Um, do I any? Do I need anything else? So I'm. I'm just kind of going through what I want to do in this um piece because it's. I'm kind of realizing if I only have thirty minutes and I don't start with anything. Like for example, I used the three D scan mushrooms yesterday. If I don't have that for uh, the piece, then it's. I kind of have to go through everything th through the whole workflow before I start. Otherwise, I'm getting kind of lost. And I'm, if I have to think about what I have to do, then um, it could be quite close to finishing um, the piece in 30 minutes. So I kind of just want to go through everything that I want to do. Uh, this one should be pretty simple, but um, I still want to just make sure that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay, perfect. I think everything's ready. So... Photoshop, we don't need you right now. Okay, yeah, I think uh, I think we're ready. So let's start the timer and then we can start with the 30 minute quick sketch. Let's start the recording. Three, two, one, go. So actually I want to start with, uh, so this one's going to have like a lot of water or it's like it's going to be like a swamp coast environment so i'm gonna make just a flat plane i think that's the best to use then what i need is a cube i'm gonna make this a rock a pretty i guess geometric rock so i'm gonna uh i'm not gonna scale it you know what i'm gonna i need another one i'm gonna do some boolean action so i need to set this to wire so we can see through we're gonna set this to boolean and select the other cube now if you push it into the, the the first cube we can see we cut out a part of this and we're gonna make it way way bigger so we can have more of a um more of the surface that we can erase at once i kind of kind of want to just bevel this i don't want to use the bevel modifier because that one always gives us very predictable outcomes which i don't really like that much so i'm just going to do it like this i'm going to just apply it and do another one boolean there you go so I'm just gonna. I need. I just need one stone, and then we can work with that. So I'm just trying to make this look sort of interesting, I guess. Um, 
just to have something um, that makes the environment more interesting. Yeah, there you go. Apply. Let's do two more. Boolean. There you go. Move that down here, maybe. This one can be more like a... This is actually supposed to be like a more a flat piece of rock. We can probably even rotate that even more in. There you go. Okay, let's do this one. Apply, and let's do one more. So we have the perfect rock. We can also probably use the Boolean modifier just to, I guess, make these edges a little bit less, um, less unrealistic. <laughs> there you go. I want to keep. Okay, there you go. That's better. Okay, that's the uh, the general stone structure. We're gonna apply this. There you go. Okay, let's move it over here. Okay, so first of all, I want to make this a little bit more realistic. No, no object in real life has perfect edges, 90 degrees corner, 90 degree corners or edges. So we're just going to use the bevel modifier. Set it pretty low, so we can. Uh, yeah, the lower, oh, not the lower, the better, but just it shouldn't be too big, of course, because then you just create more edges that look kind of unrealistic. If you make it like this, it's basically like as if the edges are just rounded which is exactly what we want. Okay, I want to make this actually longer, so more like this, maybe even wider. Yeah, like that, okay. Then we will, you know, we're going to do th uh, three different um, stones, or yeah, let's do three. So one pretty short, uh, maybe even a little bigger, there you go. And then one more, which could be maybe super flat, there you go. Maybe even wider. There you go. So we have these three stones. Now we're gonna put them into onto this plane. Um, we need. Oh, we don't need this. We need a particle setting. The first one. Let's call it one. Let's call it one. There you go. Set it to one. So we have all the particles right there. We set it to. We don't need rotation right now. We need to render object. We use the first stone. And we have a few stones on the plane, but of course it is uh, perfectly like they're just spaced out perfectly and all point in the same direction. So we need the rotation. Let's set it to global Z. Nope, that's wrong. What about the global Y? That's looking pretty good. Then we're going to set it to randomize. So they look all in different directions. What I don't really like is that they point in all sorts of directions. I would like it more to only rotate on the Y axis. Okay random face maybe we just have the uh, the wrong oh wait how, how are they facing now maybe we, yeah i think that's pretty good but i, can, I don't like the the face right now <laughs> hold on uh what about normal nope let's go through all these once more to see which one fits best they should be quite shallow that's what i'm looking for right now object z nope y this one looks pretty okay maybe the randomization a little bit lower okay yeah these ones should be not that much i think um we don't need that many though or first of all what we need to change is the scale we're gonna make them a little bit bigger and the randomness can be higher as well. Maybe not too high. We kind of, we don't want to have like two, these teeny tiny rocks. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so we need the next one. We're just going to make another particle setting. Call it 2. Let's call it here 2 as well. Just to be, uh, just to do it the exact same. 1, there you go. Let's put in rotation later. Object, the second stone. There you go. Let's set the C to something else. Otherwise, they're just going to be inside each other. There you go. We need to change the size because these ones can be actually be bigger. They point all in this direction, which I don't really like. I want to, I want them to be very flat. So we need to change their rotation. This one. That's exactly what I wanted. Perfect. Um, what about changing the randomize? Nope, that's the wrong one. Okay, so they all face in the same direction, which I don't really like. Can we somehow angular for the velocity? Nope. Global Z, object Y. Oh. oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I just want to have like a watery um, coast-like structure. We have two stones already, so let's put in the last one. 
actually what i want to do is i want to rotate this so they all face in this direction perfect in the other direction there you go um do we need this one to rotate as well why not actually no we will keep it there so we, we need one more so we're going to go ahead and add the last one i'm going to call it number four nope we're going to call it number three i'm going to go in here call it three set it to one so all the particles on, are in the first on the first frame um rotation we don't need right now object the last big boy there you go this one looks oh he, i think he's already flat let's see he's pretty oh okay well no that's not what i wanted we can also just rotate this thing so we can get the exact same rotation there you go looking kind of weird but that's just how it is okay so now we have this uh, interesting i guess coast um and this coast environment what i actually want to do i want to change their sizes so they aren't aren't all the same size i think having some of them bigger some of them smaller kind of helps make it look more realistic i also want to change the rotation give it some randomness so it doesn't look like perfectly um yeah that's perfect do we even see some water anymore yeah we do okay so first of all we have the plane that's the water. Oh, I don't want to call them. That takes so long. I'm going to save this real quick. Um, we have done some significant work. So we're going to save it. This already almost took or it took eight minutes. But now we have the environment, the basic environment. Quick sketch day 108. There you go. We're going to bring in Roberto last, I think. What I want to bring in first is some uh, the camera. I'm going to position the camera first. What I actually want to do is I want to put some something in the back, uh, in the foreground, I mean, which means I'm going to grab this one, this rock, just create some sort of foreground element, which will probably be some, some like a higher rock formation, I guess. I want to move the camera higher so we can actually see what's going on. There you go. Okay. Make it a little bit smaller. This environment is quite big, so I kind of want to make it appear big. Nope. Zip. Okay, yeah, I think that's pretty okay for the beginning. Also, as always, environments um, require a pretty high focal length to actually see something. Otherwise, it's, it looks very claustrophobic. So I always go with 30 now. That shows quite a lot increases the fov if you're playing games <laughs> um yeah so i'll use 30 for here for this one okay we're gonna put in one more thingy right there i'm gonna put in detail later i want to put in the basics first let's set it to rendered view i actually want to see what it looks like looking pretty good but too far off or too far out so we're gonna need to go closer Look at that, okay. We then move this focus point a little bit over here maybe, somewhere over there. Okay, so let's put in a world lighting first. I think I'm gonna use an HDRI for this one. This one is gonna be a very, um, a very foggy scene. So let's see if we have something with a pretty clear sky. We're gonna add the fog ourselves. I think this one might be good because this one, although, Hmm. let's see if we can rotate it so we don't have this green in the background we also have to set it to black and white let's do that first color huge saturation there you go saturation to zero there you go next up let's see the rotation i want to have um i think there is some sort of just only like a yeah this looks pretty okay already we want to have like a very far-reaching environment i think that's the best shot we're gonna get perfect so that's pretty good um let's save this one some more what do we need more we need the fog so let's add the fog we're going to move this up by one so we can have the uh, pivot point at the bottom so if we scale it's always going to move up we're going to scale it wide as well position it on the cube i mean on the plane a little bit wider there you go perfect perfect coverage Let's set it to wire and also oh yeah we need to give this a new material so let's go to object <clears throat> we have 18 minutes left make a new 
object there you go we don't need principal bsdf we need principal volume put that in there set it to one okay actually i want to put this a little bit higher otherwise we have this weird bug in there yeah that's better okay this is way too high so we have to decrease the density what about 0.5 this is still too high what about 0.05 oh oh this looks cool it's too it's too low actually i want to have something more uh yeah i'm using cycles i'm not really usually i'm always using cycles just because it's just more intuitive for me i've been using cycles since the beginning and um ev just seemed i think ev is better if you really want to make some like um if you don't care about full photorealism <laughs> and we want to work with the final look i guess if you want to work like in the rendered viewport i think ev can be quite good because you can actually immediate, immediately see what it will look like in the end and you can make changes in the viewport with rendering enabled but yeah i just prefer cycles it's just i don't know more intuitive for me you just ha you don't have to set up all the lighting yourself you don't have to enable how the shadows should look and all that stuff so i just i just use chuckles where everything is set up already like perfectly uh already done you don't have to change anything okay there you go we have some nice a nice foggy scene we need to set these ones to the same materials so there you go control l materials link them they're pretty dark so i'm gonna uh, make them lighter maybe like like that yeah that's pretty good so we're gonna make this water actually water so what I found is pretty simple to make water. We're going to use a principal BSF, keep it on white. We use a metallic shader. Uh, specularity can be the same and roughness zero. Now we can see some nice water, nice reflections on there. That's exactly what we wanted. If you want to make this water, I guess, more realistic, we could also um, give it some more, some, some sort of roughness map, either procedural or um you know what i'm gonna remove this either procedural or with a i guess photo texture just to make the surface a little bit more un like varied which just makes it look more realistic um i'm not gonna do that i need roberto now so i'm gonna have the focus i mean the foreground in the scene which is uh there you go Put him in there, append the good guy. Collection. There you go. There he is. Okay. Yeah, so this is actually su supposed to be some sort of um, coast water. So there's really like ripples in the water just because the waves aren't really there. It's supposed to be like just like a a pond that is like very very calm and um and very quiet with very little movement so i could add some yeah i could probably do that um but i kind of like the, the the look of just like complete calm water that's why i kind of want to um leave it so um completely I guess flat <clears throat> so we're gonna put him in first i like the look already especially with this hdri he's actually gonna stand on this stone is he too big right now i think he's a little bit too big the stone should be pretty big so something like that actually as big as him so now we can i guess like lean on it on the stone maybe like over here maybe he should be you know, yeah, we're going to rotate him a little bit. There you go. Move him close to the stone so you can put it, put his foot on it. And then we can go into the posing. We're going to use this one. Come on, put your foot up there. Oh no, <laughs> his leg is broken. There you go. Okay. He looks pretty uh, weird right now. We have to change his other foot. I'm going to move. You know what? No, he's going to lean on his front foot. The other one can be kind of... Maybe even like stretched out like this. Actually, wait, where's the end? Oh, we could actually, 
you know what i'm gonna move him a little bit over here because the water should be like at least a little bit deeper maybe like that there you go so kind of suggest suggesting that this is actually water and not just like a perfectly reflective and flat plane there you go okay then his upper body maybe we can move it over here a little bit otherwise i think he's kind of out of um he would fall over the other hand let's see let's see what could we do so he's gonna spot something in the distance we have 30 minutes to put that in as well let's see if we can get to it hopefully <laughs> or there it is yeah he, he could be pretty high there you go okay He's going to put his hand on his knee. There you go. Okay. Oh, nope. Let's, let's, let's just leave it there. Okay, let's add the camera. The camera should be roughly on his head side, uh, head height to make it more immersive. But of course, not like perfectly in inside of him. Maybe we can move it over here. You know what? I'm going to move it there so we can still see him in his full glory but it's still on the same height there you go so let's add the object that i want to add so what we need is uh let's just use a cube first where's my cube there it is to make i want to make a creature so we're just going to use a subdivision to make some organic shapes what i need is first of all i need two extrusions there you go we're gonna make the second one pretty slim the other one can stay you know what i need one more right there because i need to pull this up this is going to be like the i guess the uh the chest this one's going to be like the uh bottom part of the creature i'm gonna move this down okay so we're gonna move it there Okay, that's gonna how it's gonna look like. We need a, a head, so I'm gonna use another cube. You know what? I'm gonna set the cursor right there so we can spawn them right inside of what we need, where we need to connect them. Subdivisions, make it a little bit longer. Zip. We also wanna have one right there. Uh, and one right there. Right there. We're gonna scale them slimmer there you go we don't really need to change them in this direction but i'm gonna do it anyway there you go okay the head is kind of big so i'm gonna make it smaller move it maybe over here there you go okay we're not gonna we don't have to detail it because it's not gonna be that visible anyway there you go let's rotate it so they can connect looking pretty good oh that's wrong we need this face right there extruded it's quite wide can we just scale it oh okay maybe not that works i guess just trying to fit it in there we don't have that much time left so i'm gonna try to be quick with this there you go perfect make it wider so it's more looking more like a neck perfect okay so let's add the rest uh let's make a quick i guess plane where we can see where the floor is where he should stand on so we can make sure all the limbs are the same length we then need just another cube oh use subdivisions there you go so let's make the back foot first i'm going to scale it thinner in these two directions rotate them as well there you go okay so this one will look kind of like a i guess like a mammal <laughs> i don't really know how to describe it okay so this one is going to be the the knee looking forward then we have the the second part of the leg and then there's the, the last part I, I don't really know what the bones or whatever called are called for animals so i'm just gonna call them bones number one two and three there you go we have eight minutes left, almost nine, perfect. 
we're gonna add one more oh right there look at that a perfect foot <laughs> let's uh make this a little bit slimmer probably not that visible in the end but whatever whatever maybe we could use it later if we make it a little more detailed now we don't have to do it later there you go select it right there i'm gonna go into the side view so i can move it perfectly in the uh y direction okay it's way too big right now so i'm gonna add a cut right oh that's the wrong one add a cut right there this is way too thick i'm gonna move these faces back okay so that's a very rough i guess lag but that's okay i actually want to move this one actually more over here there you go yeah that's more looking like a lag now okay Maybe it's still a little bit too crazy. I don't really, I haven't really studied animals that much yet, which is also in my on my uh, list of ideas. Maybe doing a animal anatomy session just to kind of learn how they are built. Yeah, we'll see. So I uh, actually would need one more. I'm gonna just make a new cube. There you go for the front legs. <clears throat> so scale it in this direction there you go this one should also be a little bit thinner there you go this one will actually be pretty straight down move it over here and pull it down if you want to have oh where am i if you want to use the local axis of an object you can press the uh axis button twice which will give you the local version if you for example rotate an object and you want to then extrude it on its i guess local axis then you have to press uh for example if you want to rotate it on the local z axis or extrude it you have to use uh you have to press z twice okay i want to actually customize this a little bit more move give it this cut right there and then maybe do it like this Okay, looks kind of weird, but that's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> okay, maybe we could give this a little bit of a variation. Maybe we could move this over here just to make it look like it's a little bit more organic rather than just a statue. It's actually moving. So I'm going to move this foot a little bit forward, maybe like this. And the leg in front, we're going to move as well. Maybe we're going to rotate it like this. You know what? And I'm gonna actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and select this. I'm gonna add another cut. I'm gonna select this again, put the cursor right there, use the cursor as the transformation point, select the bottom part. There you go. Rotate it around this point. Maybe like this. Looks kind of scuffed right now. Mm. But that's okay, we don't really see it anyway. Maybe we could make this, I guess. Let's see. If we could move it closer over here. Oh, there you go. Okay, I mean, yeah, <laughs> that works. Okay, we're gonna grab it. We're gonna actually gonna parent it. Let's parent everything to the body, the neck as well. There you go. Parent object. There you go. Now we can move it into the scene. I'm actually going to duplicate it so we have the the base always available if we want to move it or change it okay so rotate it by 90 degrees oh we have to change it back to the median point pivot point there you go can we see it oh we can look at that in the background it's way too small right now so we still have to change that i want to place him first and then we can change his size oh there he is Look at them. We have four minutes left. Perfect. I'm gonna actually move it, move them further out so we can just see a silhouette in the background. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. That's the first part. Mm, what I need now is I'm gonna need to save first. There you go. I actually want to put in a little bit more, but what I want to focus on first is I want to make him more, I guess, visible. I will give him a new material. Hopefully, if I make him black he's gonna appear a little bit more he's gonna be more visible in the in the fog there you go 
link materials yeah he's he's a little bit more visible perfect so i also oh, welcome vicente welcome back um there you go so i want to add a light point light there you go switch it to make the radius smaller oh no do you mean you found the cat emoji or cow emoji <laughs> i'm gonna use a sphere this is actually supposed to be a visible glowing object so i'm gonna make it like this i'm gonna move it over here as well so we have two a big rat oh i mean i think it looks like a cat <laughs> or maybe the, the a cat that's more like a rising tail you cannot say if it's if it's a rat or a a, a mouse okay because you cannot uh <laughs> you don't know what the difference is okay um what do i need mission there you go link the two now i need to increase the emission let's set it to 1000 maybe that's enough yeah they're actually too big so let's make them smaller i'm going to set it to individual origins so we can scale them individually very very small there you go perfect um yeah so we have two and a half minutes left perfect so we can add some detail <clears throat> oh there is actually like a rat and a mouse emoji <laughs> perfect <clears throat> oh you can even see him in the reflection down there yeah i mean that's kind of visible i mean yeah because of the size and the color what are they called i guess r rat and mouse okay so <clears throat> this is actually quite uh oh yeah i want to add some more stuff so what i want to add is like just more rocks I guess we could use this one to uh, use. There you go. We're going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And the, you know, I, I like it this way. I'm going to go use this side. I'm going to make it thinner. We could maybe use this vertice. Move it lower. Actually, no, I'm going to move it higher. There you go. We want to have these monolith, monoliths. Putting that into the scene to make it look more interesting, I guess. They're pretty. I want to make them a little bit thinner. So I'm going to. Yeah, just scale them in X and Y direction. I'm going to put them all over the place just to make it look more interesting. They shouldn't steal the show, so I'm going to make them actually a little bit smaller, or at least this one. I'm going to put in one more back here. Maybe two more. There you go. I'm going to save it real quick. We have 53 seconds left. I actually want to um let's see i think i want to add a light because roberto's kind of getting lost in the in the fog so maybe if we add one like a light to the front right here that actually helped quite a lot to kind of give him some more definition like that although yeah yeah, yeah. maybe we can move it over here a little bit more increase the strength maybe to 1000 so we can kind of light more of the scene radius a little bit lower yeah maybe we could even move some over here as well just to have like multiple light sources in the scene maybe one back there as well we can maybe even make this stronger we have two seconds so let's set it to 2k there you go I actually want to see if we can go with a little bit lower with the density, maybe 0.6. Yeah, okay. Of course, fog always makes the image more, I guess, more um, more shallow in its depth. I actually kind of thought about maybe not using it for for a few but then the problem is i i don't think i have really found a good mix between using the volumetric volumetrics um and using or overusing volumetrics because usually if i add them they create a cool effect but then with that cool effect also comes the shallow depth 
which um, can be quite a, a problem. But of course, we can just increase the, uh, the density. I mean, the uh, the depth in Photoshop, which is what we're going to do in a second. We're going to render it first, so we can do some post production in Blender, which will probably need, probably not be much, but we'll see. We're going to switch this to the image view. There you go. Hit F12 to render. Let's see how long it's going to take. Oh, almost done. Perfect. Oh, okay. There you go. Look at that. Okay. Um, my PC, P, PC specs are, um, I have a 10, 10, 1060, um, GTX 1060 with six gigabytes, I think. And then a AMD Ryzen, whatever. Hold on. How, how can I see that again? Can I see that in my task manager somewhere? Oh, there it is. No, there is not. I think details no what is it like oh um device manager it is um nvidia geforce gtx 1066 gigabyte and then my processor amd ryzen 7 1708 core processor um is there anything else? I don't think so. Can I see my um, my motherboard somewhere? Hmm. I don't. What do you mean? The frame of the image? Oh. Oh. Hello, Athrun. Welcome back. Hope you had a great day so far. The frame of the image is managed by resolution. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I put the resolution right now at 250 just so we can render it faster and then we can do some post production and then we can de render the final version. I don't think I can see my, my motherboard. Um. <laughs> you know, actually, I I just recently used, or I I'm currently using a MacBook at work for a quick 3D project, just like small graphic for a um a um Spotify playlist cover. Um, which yeah, it works. If I, I use EV, so it's just I think EV is a little bit less intensive on the pc or on yeah on the computer so um that's one of the few um projects where i use ev just because the the graphics themselves don't really look that realistic so i can use that also they are supposed to be animated and using cycles to animate stuff is just annoying because you have to render so much um 50 percent just means um 90, 90 20 by 90 20 is the resolution that i want to use if i set it to 50 percent it's going to be 50 percent of that so whatever 90 20 divided by two is okay so let's go to here we need a glare note i want to make his eyes glow oh hello look at that we can even see them down there he's lurking down there as well okay but what if we increase the threshold i mean decrease it oh it's gonna make it, the whole image a little bit wider. I don't really know if I want that. Let's bring it back to one and see if the difference. You know, yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, we don't really need lens distortion, so I'm just gonna save it there. Now we can set it to 100%, so 1920 by 1920. Save and render. Yeah. I'm using a MacBook for this quick animation um, and it works quite quite fine or quite good. The only, I guess, problem that I have is the navigation 
um, because you don't have a, or I didn't use a mouse um, on my MacBook. I just forgot it <laughs> at work, so I had to use the, or I'm using the trackpad right now. Um, so the navigation is a little bit more, I guess, annoying. And also the, you don't have the, num, the numpad. So you cannot use, for example, you cannot press the, what is it, delete button or the button next to zero to zoom onto an object that you have selected, which is a very helpful tool because this way you can just click something and then zip, you go right there, look at it, and you can, like, if you want to work on it, you can very easily, like, get to it, which is um, yeah, very helpful, but not really, uh, you can do that on a MacBook because there is no numpad. <laughs> there you go i actually like this grainy texture so i'm gonna leave it there the oh hold on did i not even increase the resolution okay well i mean that we could probably do that what about four 128 let's try 256 let's try again Zip. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I never really used quick favorites, but I felt that like the feature itself is really cool. I always wish that that would exist in other programs as well, like Photoshop. Just like pressing right click or whatever it is to get all the most important functions all in, in a quick list. I think that's a really, really cool f feature um, that I probably should use a little bit more often, but <laughs> I don't know, Some usually the tasks that i use have um have hotkeys on them or use hotkeys so i don't really need it that much but it can be very very helpful uh wait where's my there it is okay how long is this gonna take four and a half minutes yeah that's okay <clears throat> time for a drink So as long as you don't do some crazy ultra realistic uh stuff in, in on a on a MacBook, you should be good, at least in the beginning. Yeah, so if you um of course so yeah, the principle is if you wanna have a noise free image or if you wanna reduce the noise in an image, you wanna increase the sampling which just basically means that you increase the amount of rendered or amount of um, time or yeah you can increase the number of um, calculations that the PC t uh, uses to calculate the light bounces and all that in a frame so for example the, in the frame that is currently highlighted you can see it gets less noisy less noisy less noisy until there's like until you've reached the sampling rate that you've set for me it is what is it 256 so it's the pc is basically calculating the light 256 times and it's going to be more and more accurate if you want to increase the sampling rate even more you get less and less noise the problem is of course the more you increase it the longer it's going to take um so what you can also use is a denoiser that removes um, quite a lot of noise the problem is um yeah the less or the more noise there is the more detail you're going to lose um because the denoiser kind of blurs the image and um it's um yeah that's basically the biggest problem you lose i guess quality a good thing is like so if you just want to make a I guess like a perfect render that is like looking flawless without any noise i think you would either have to increase the sampling to like crazy to like a crazy amount like i don't know 2000 or so i usually always stay under under 500 um, because at 500 or less um the no or like at roughly 256 
and more i think usually the denoiser does a quick like does a pretty good job so if you want to if you're like um press on time a denoiser can be very very helpful but if you want to make like the the perfect render then you can increase the sampling and of course you can see how it's going to look with and without the denoiser by going to your um compositor um and then you can bring in what that's what i use as a denoising option the denoise um note to make it look or to make it work of course you have to in to, you have to plug in the render layer image into the image socket and then to make it even better you can go to the layer properties and there's the this denoising data um tick box if you want to if you enable that you have these like more options we have the denoising normal and denoising albedo that's that's getting added by this option which you can plug into the denoising shader or note which um, makes it just more effective more um yeah better in general and then if you want to see what it's going to look like with and without the shader you can go to your what is it called the editor type i mean not the editor type the image editor and then you can go to the render result view so you can see um, the rendered image if you then want to see what it looks like with and without the denoiser once you're done rendering you can plug it into the render tree i'm going to call it um or node tree in the compositor window um you can see what is look what it looks like with a denoiser and then you can just press m to mute it yeah, then you can see what it looks like without a denoiser and then you can decide which one you think it looks better <clears throat> uh, you find the denoiser node in the filter filter and then denoise there it is I also usually always add the glare node just because it adds some like glow around stuff like lights which just make them look more powerful and also more real realistic because usually glare comes from particles in the air or like atmosphere which basically just reflects the light that is coming from the from the light source which creates this halo or like glare effect around the original light source so if you if you have more um more i guess fog there's going to be more glare you can see right there is some glare um on this light that i put in the scene um you can change a few settings if you set the threshold lower the glare is going to be stronger if you set it higher the, the glare is going to be i guess weaker you have a few more settings you can change the glare type i usually just go with fog glow that this glare node makes the yeah the light just look more realistic <laughs> and then usually or sometimes when i use colored images these ones right now are just like black and white or monochrome if i use colors what you can also add to give it like the stylistic effect is a lens distortion and then increase the dispersion the value should be pretty low or at least i like them to be pretty low that kind of gives it a very dynamic effect and what it basically does it is it um it stretches the image on the edges and also um like how do you call it the you uh, it not disconnects it splits the rgb colors or rgb channels um it splits them so you have this rainbow effect on the edges let's see if that actually works on this one as well so if we bring that in of course nothing will happen right now because we have ch changed no values if we increase this window we can see it better so first of all if we want to change or remove the nose uh, noise <laughs> node you can see we have some noise especially you can see it in the light right there so the noise is very very strong still with what is it 256 um samples that is probably because we have used a volume node which brings in this fog effect um that usually always adds more noise um and then if we use the denoise node you can see when it's done you can see everything's smooth um 
yeah there's another option or there's like a i guess advanced denoising node setup that i've tried before but it's not perfect so that's why i don't use it um then i add the glare node you can see what it does if we mute it hopefully it's working on here maybe it's not then i have to decrease the threshold okay apparently it doesn't work so if we decrease the threshold maybe to 0.1 Okay, why does it not work? Something happened. It worked before. Oh, no. What? <laughs> what happened? I don't know what happened. Well, oh, let's see if we can use the lens distortion. Um, let's set it to one so we can see a very big difference if it actually works. There it is. That's what happens. It stretches the image out on the outer edges and splits the rgb channels um i think it stretches the r no the the blue channel the most then it the, the middle or like the medium stretch is going to be on the green channel and the red channel is going to be the least stretched that's how you get this rainbow effect it can look really really cool on images but i usually keep it at like 0.1 or so to make it not like this crazy because it kind of makes the image it zooms into the image and can be quite um i guess can be can be a, seen as a hack to make it look more interesting that's why i usually keep it at like 0.1 or even less but i, I don't want to use it for this one so i'm gonna remove it um the weird thing is there's no there's no glare now why something happened Actually, I want to see. Okay, so if you can you see the values? So you can set. So, oh no. Can you paint? What about painting? No. So, usually, if you hover with your mouse over. Wait. No. So, if you hover over a part of the image with your mouse, you can usually see the values of every pixel. So this white should be close to one. This um, darker color right here should be closer to zero. Um, usually the range goes from zero to one, but if you render the image as an EXR, which you can set in the output panel right there, uh, output, open EXR, and then float full RGBA, that basically, so the color is just RGB and then the alpha channel as well, which isn't really necessary for this image or for usually my images, but I just leave it on RGBA. So if we ever have like a transparency, um, I don't have to change it. Color depth, I'm just set it to full. I think that's 32 bit. Um, a normal PNG maximum has 16 bit, which basically just increased the dense or the uh, depth of the image. So, um, or the color range, um, the, the, the colors can get darker and also brighter. Um, yeah, oh, no, that so white will st still stay white and black will still stay black, but you have more steps between black and white if you increase the bitrate. <clears throat> That's why I always use OpenXR to render it, and then I save it still as a PNG. It still keeps more um, information, or it it, it it keeps the depth um, of an EXR, but you can you, you save it as a PNG. Mm. So that is kind of weird that they don't glow now. Oh, hold on. Did I change the wrong <laughs> value? Or do I have to set it to 0.5? What happened? My glare is gone. Oh, that's dark. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, hold on. I guess we're not going to use the glare node then. Something weird happened. I don't really know what I changed, but now it's not working anymore. I mean, we could probably just maybe try another one, like a new one. Yeah, that's the, the standard look. We could, I usually change it to fog glow and then just plug it in. There you go. 
Let's see. Okay, nothing happened. I don't know why, though. Did I change any settings here? Maybe the glow is stronger in the render, which doesn't make sense. I mean, okay. Yeah, I don't want to waste too much time on this. I want to actually work on um, the MSI Creator Award. I mean, not the award, but uh, the uh, the submission. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it there. Save the image. There you go. Okay. Let's switch to Photoshop. Before I do that, though, I'm going to import my image. There you go. Okay. Let's switch. We don't need the timer anymore. Okay, so let's do some adjustments. It looks kind of flat right now. So we're going to, first of all, bring in some contrast. Zip. Okay, so this one's now darker, but we can go even, I guess, deeper into it. We can use the selective color correction where we can target all the different values. We're going to, for example, increase the black tones. Oh, okay, the black tones are actually only back there in, in these rocks. Well, that should work. Then the gray tones, zip. Ooh. Maybe like that. And then we have the white tones. Maybe we can increase them, actually. Yeah, like, like that, maybe. Keeping it quite foggy. I actually wanted it to, to be quite hidden in in the uh in the fog now he's pretty visible but i guess no that doesn't work <laughs> i'm gonna leave it there okay <clears throat> do we need anything else i think that looks pretty okay So the next part will be, we're going to add my trusty fingerprint texture. Mm, there you go. The fingerprint texture just adds like a little bit of flair to it. Right now it's just black, but if we set it to add, there you go, the mix mode add, it looks like this. There you go. Okay. Save the file. Save the JPEG. We're almost done. There you go. Okay, perfect. Let's switch back to Blender. Let's uh, open today's file. There you go. Oh, yep, I want to save. There it is. We're almost done with this side. Of course, we're going to add more detail, but the rough sketch, I guess, is almost done. Mm. Before we start, though, I'm going to upload my image. So before I do that, though, I want to I have to import it, of course, into my phone. Copy, paste, there you go, okay. So, until we start, while I'm uploading, I'm going to play this compilation, month one and month two compilation. So, um, I hope you enjoy, I'll see you in three minutes.
My bitrate just decided to drop immediately when I started the uh, the video. Perfect. Um, I'm almost done. Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay, so let's start. <clears throat> So we um, began, we tried a few methods how we could add these leaves to um, the, the ring or these branches. Uh, the easiest way we came to was just to add them ourselves, in, like individually adding each one. They're quite big so that we're not going to need like hundreds of leaves. So, so it shouldn't take too long to do it. <clears throat> Hold on, I want to see, I want to quickly change something. Hmm. Okay. There you go. Okay. So let's go ahead and add some more. So I'm going to probably go all the way to up here and then we can. Yeah, we're going to do the other side. Once we have the other side, we can add more detail. So we're going to enable snapping so we can snap this onto the branch. And we're just going to finish this side. Oh, there you go. That's the first one of today. <laughs> there you go. Move it over here. Rotate it out. Okay. Next week, it's going to be very very uh i guess 
productive for me. I'm going to have a, um, a free or I have a week of vacation. So I'm probably going to spend it on some more, I don't know, stream stuff, some more video stuff. Cause, um, or maybe I don't really know. I still have this, this resume that I want to do for my, for like a job that I want to apply to or send my resume to. Um, so that's also one thing that I still have to finish. I so they specialize in doing video editing or 3D showcase stuff, 3D animations and all that stuff, which my current work doesn't really do. So I, I think the best step for me to improve myself or to like improve my skills, get better would probably be to um yeah, to switch the job. And I think that uh, agency would be a good choice. Still, uh, I have to finish my application before, of course, I can. Um, <laughs> I can send my resume. It's supposed to be so just to, I guess, in, increase my chances to get go there and basically just, I guess, show my skills. I wanted to make a video resume showing off not only like my por portfolio, but also just showing that I can edit videos, I guess. Um, so that's why I kind of need a little bit more time to finish it. Um, I've been kind of holding off on, off of an, off on it or I haven't really been working on it for the last maybe two weeks or so just because I um I guess put more pri priority on other other uh other stuff but yeah I definitely want to finish it at some point because I think that's just a like they right now actually have like a job they're looking for like a person they're looking for um that fits my skills almost perfectly so yeah i kind of want to yeah just send them my resume pretty quickly to make sure that they're not going to find someone before i actually send my resume over i don't want to rush it but i also don't want to i guess waste my time not not working on it or whatever Okay. So I'm gonna make make these leaves in the back a little bit more spread out. That but you can also see back there. Um I just want to see what it looks like. Maybe it doesn't really fit. Maybe it does. We'll see. Maybe make them a little bit smaller. Just trying to put them onto this branch. Maybe one more the beginning you can also enable snapping by pressing shift and tab but i i don't know i always go up there and press it i don't really know why probably because of habit i don't really i didn't know what what the hot k was so i just pressed the button all the time and now i have like the habit of pressing it There you go. I think that's, uh, yeah, that's the first, uh, the first side, the first, yeah, the right side. Let's do the other one. I'm just going to grab one of these leaves, which we can, uh, you know what? I'm just going to use this one. There you go. Let's, uh, wait, where's the curve? Oh, there it is. Put the leaf onto the curve. Oh, we have to convert the curve. That's what we did yesterday. You cannot pin something onto a curve because the geometry is always changing or it's like the dynamic topology, which means that it's... <clears throat> you cannot target the geometry with pinning, for example. So what we have to do is we have to duplicate the branch. We have to convert it to an actual mesh. There you go. It's right inside of the actual branch. And then we can just pin it right onto the branch. There you go. 
<clears throat> okay, so. Let's do the other side. So I want to make them a little bit like, I want to intersect them so they kind of close the ring in the center. They're not going to, I guess, go all the way around. They're just going to connect in the center. The, the, the tips of the leaves, I guess. So I have to, I'm going to start off with that. Um, I'm going to pull them a little bit further back. There you go. I think that's okay. We have to find a good spot so they're not intersecting. Okay, we also can of course move the curve if we want to, to make it look more, or to change the shape even more. I'm going to leave it there for now. There you go. They're quite spread out, uh, so what we're going to do, we're just going to add another one to fill the gap. There you go. Okay. They're actually quite far off. So maybe we should move them a little bit further back. These ones are quite f like close to the to the uh, hair. These ones like point up quite quite far or are quite far away. So I'm actually going to remove these. I'm going to place them replace them and put them closer to the to the head you know we could also just use these as the upper i guess layer we're gonna make these leaves i guess put them lower this way we can make sure that they're i guess close enough to the head there you go changing the rotation in every on every angle okay you can also move it up a little bit. There you go. Oh, it's intersecting. Zip. There you go. Okay. That's the first one. Let's continue. So there's an... I have a new uh, strategy to combat or to test some stuff about my uh, bitrate uh there there are different restream servers that you can stream to i've always been using the auto auto detect stream server but you can actually target in like specific servers so what i'm gonna go what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just go through the whole list and use one at a time every day right now we're i'm gonna i'm using the london server to connect to um yeah we're just gonna go through the whole list one stream at a time and see maybe if there's <laughs> if there's one that's like i guess the best i read uh, on the restream forum forum i think there was like a help help article that said that no it was on obs that sometimes eu i guess people have a better streaming experience if they stream to us servers so that kind of convinced me to just go through all of them. Yeah, I, I mean, auto detect, auto detect, auto detect probably chooses the one that's closest to me. But maybe if they're like overloaded or whatever, they could be like maybe less optimal. So I'm just gonna go through all of them. Maybe there's like a big difference between them. I don't know. You know, just doing some experiments. <laughs> um, min maxing. Oh. Okay. So there are two servers in Germany, but yeah, I don't know. I just want to make sure that I don't know that I use the best option. Let's do the next one. There you go. So this is of course a quite monotonous task, but it has to be done. And the more effort we're going to put into this, the better it's going to look in the end. It's the same with hair, like real time hair or 
hair particles hair in general hair modeling is quite tedious but the more the more time you spend on it the better it's going to look in the end if you know what you're doing of course So once we're done with the first layer of all these big leaves, maybe we're going to adjust some of them to make them, I guess, yeah, we're going to change maybe the curve to make them look more unique. So they don't all just curve in. You can see right here some kind of have like a different flow, I guess, which we can change with the curve. Um, and then we're going to add like smaller ones as well to increase the volume and make it look better. Or like maybe just more increase the depth, I guess. That's also how you work with hair. With hair, you first set the main. It's basically how you how you model everything. Or we also paint. You you create the base first. Just for example, blocking out everything, whether that is hair, sculpting, or painting a face, for example, or like a portrait. And then you go deeper and deeper and deeper into more and more detail. So if you ever think about doing like a big project you don't really know where to start you can just ask yourself okay well what would be the first step that i could take to get to my goal and then at some point you see oh well now i've done the first step what's the next step and usually you can kind of follow a certain path mentally that you may not really see in the beginning because you kind of just see everything that you have to do or you see the end result and you don't really know where to start um or you don't really know which steps do you need to take if you take it like step by step going from uh, very very blocky to very very detailed i think that'll that'll get you far <laughs> Actually, what I want to add to the back here as well is I'm going to add this weird band that he has. Maybe not, maybe not like perfect, exactly like him, like his. But I want to have something, I guess, hanging down here. I think that's going to add a little bit more to the look. Going to make it look a little bit more interesting and detail. So. The plan that I um, set up or that how I plan this week is maybe we can finish or we will finish the wreath today. Maybe even the whole look. So shaders and I want to add one more thing to the the connection from the, the I guess mechanical arms to the sculpt. <clears throat> Once that's in and everything's shaded. We can look into lighting once more just to optimize it i guess maybe add some some sort of particles in the air to make it look more magical and then um it's done i can render it um i'm gonna render it of course off screen off stream so that we can then tomorrow hopefully tomorrow we can go into post-production uploading it um yeah, and then we're done. We're gonna look at a few or like at the other submissions. And that's hopefully gonna to be tomorrow. If not tomorrow, because we have to work a little bit more on, I guess the project in terms of um, setting everything up to prepare it for rendering or whatever. We're gonna do it on Saturday. Friday is not gonna be a stream day. Um, I already have plans for Friday. So the next one, if we're not done on Thursday, the next stream will be on Saturday.
maybe weekend weekends or like the saturday sunday will always be like a gambling whether or not i'm gonna stream <laughs> i think sometimes i have like the time for it sometimes i want to do something else um so yeah maybe 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 but nothing is um set in stone as always on weekends okay let's see we're almost we're halfway there it's kind of weird we're at 3.5 percent drop frames which is even higher than if i then when i don't when i haven't like when i didn't enable the uh the i guess reduced drop frame setting maybe there's some sort of bug or whatever that it doesn't really work properly maybe i should disable it again just to test if it's better than i never really was or yeah i mean three percent isn't like super high but still the best would probably be or would of course be like nothing like zero zero frames but i don't know i, I think that's quite uh almost impossible with my internet connection right now i'm gonna move it further back so we have some more space right there the weird thing is which i which i still don't get like last last stream yesterday was like so weird in the end it was like this little bit of bitrate going through then zero a little bit of bitrate going through zero a little bit of bitrate going through zero all the time and it added more and more and more drop frames and more and more and more latency um and i don't even know why there was probably some sort of bug or whatever technical error because immediately afterwards i've done a speed test and everything was fine i've done two one word tracks or one from google and one from i think vodafone or whatever which tracks your connection more long term and shows you a graph and the graph was, was like perfectly straight which is like wait what how how can i have like these fluctuant uh <laughs> bit rates um yeah, this fluctuant bitrate, if everything's fine, how does that work? I'm guessing it's just it was just some sort of bug or whatever, crazy error. It never happened before. Hopefully it's never going to happen again, especially not... I mean, it could probably happen in the end, but it shouldn't happen in the beginning. the tests on uh, Monday only gonna stream on Twitch just to see if there's any difference but I I'm I think there is gonna be no difference I think it's gonna be the exact same I think it's just my my it's it's uh, on my end but we'll see I don't really know I mean hopefully there is a solution <laughs> maybe the solution is to get a new I don't know internet ISP or whatever internet connection but We'll see. Fifty? What do you mean fifty? Fifty percent? Probability. Or fifty fifty uh uh cash. Okay. <laughs> 50 emoji coins. OK. 
Okay, almost done. Almost there. First layer is almost done. Almost sounds like a new cryptocurrency. Emoji coins. <laughs> Gotta get those emoji coins. Gonna be huge in a year. Stock up now. Soon Elon Musk is gonna tweet out emoji coin. I like two eyes emoji. And everybody's everybody's gonna buy it. Wait, what happened? Something happened. Why did it change color? What? Oh. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> That's the best, the best cow emoji. <laughs> The most versatile. Or hold on, I have an idea. <laughs> hold on. Um okay, where is it? I need this one. Here. <laughs> hold on. There you go. Take some hearts. <laughs> oh now it changed back. That's weird. Okay, I think I'm gonna need I'm gonna make them smaller now. They get quite they're still pretty big, the other side I think got pretty small already, so I'm gonna start with that now. There you go. Scale it down. Just a little bit. That's quite far. There you go. Let's start the small leaf way. Okay, almost there, almost there. There you go. Yeah, every time <laughs> going back to the MacBook, every time I can, I try to sneak in some some sort of 3D project. Usually it happens when we have some sort of internal projects. So like right now, for example, um, one of our one of my coworkers made a playlist where we all could add like a like a I guess company playlist where everybody can give him songs that he's going to add to the spotify playlist i think as some sort of marketing tool or whatever and he needed he needed a um, a cover because if you look at a spotify playlist you see the small little uh i guess the small little um yeah cover on the top left side um and he asked me to do one like to create one and i could i just created a quick uh, cover and then uh yeah <laughs> he also wanted to um, post some social media posts so it, it's supposed to be animated as well I'm not gonna do like crazy animations it's I'm just gonna make like a quick I guess looping animation um, I already started so yeah it's gonna be like a small little loop um, which is gonna be animated of course I'm going to use Eevee because otherwise the render time will just take ages with Eevee, I think every frame should take a few seconds, which will probably come to, I think it's at the end, it's going to be 200 frames. So probably like 200 times two, 400, I don't know, like a few hours. 
but still better than cycles. Yeah, I always try to sneak in <laughs> new. Like, it, I think, so the first actual, like how I actually introduced 3D or how I, I guess, showed off my 3D uh, capabilities on at work was that one of our, or the break room was supposed to be renovated. Um, two of my coworkers decided to take on the job to do it, to plan everything and all that. Oh, perfect, we're done with the first layer. <clears throat> Let's see if we can adjust more some curves. Um, so yeah, we um, they wanted to renovate the room, which is done now. Um, but back then they had some plans that they showed um, the, our bosses. We have two. And um, I decided to use that situation or that, the, that project to introduce i guess the um to introduce everyone to the idea of using 3d and also just to show off i guess my 3d skills so what i did was i um grabbed their ideas i also grabbed the measurements of the room which is pretty small the room itself and i um remodeled the room and also yeah basically renovated it um in cg first i showed it off in uh like of course at work i i did everything at work after i was like after i was done working regularly and uh yeah so everybody get kind of like an idea what you can do with 3d or what i can do with 3d um, and then at some point we started implementing some small pieces of 3D here and there to just a few projects so far. I think in the year that I've been working or that it that it, it has been since I showed off that, I guess, demo, skill demo, <laughs> we've done, I think, like two or three projects. I think most of them were like internal projects. So like, for example, social media postings or um, we had one, I think actually the second ever 3D project that I've done at work was a bottle cap for, our, for a beer company. They wanted to have some sort of like social media stickers that you can put on to Instagram stories, for example, that you have to upload to Giphy so you can use them everywhere um so one of them was just like this bottle cap with their brand on it and it was just rotating so it was pretty simple but it was still like the first step into 3d um not only for me commercially i guess or professionally but also for them yeah it looked pretty cool then the next i think the next oh yeah the next one was actually like the nightmare project <laughs> where um, we had to replace the ground of a shooting like there was a photo shooting but the, sh the, the, the ground was a different one than what we had anticipated so we had to replace after the shooting was done we had to replace the whole like the whole ground which we which we did by uh yeah, I modeled the ground. Had of course to had to implement the shadows of every every uh, model into the scene. I exported or rendered the ground. I think in the end it was like 40 images or so, um, which took quite a while. And I I collected like quite a few, <laughs> um, I guess. How do you call them when you work longer than eight hours? These hours, what do you call them? Um, overtime, yeah. I, I collected some overtime. <laughs> I even worked uh, over the weekend once just to finish the whole thing, which was definitely uh, a situation that I don't want to 
um, do ever again. But yeah, I mean, if it, if it ever comes to it again, I guess you have to get through it. It wouldn't have happened if we would actually would have known that the ground was a different one. But I mean, yeah, what, what can you do now? It was actually like I was just chilling at work at some point and then the co-worker that was working on it just came over or like like turned around asked me like oh hey do you have a lot of work today i mean do you have a lot of work right now and i was like that well a little bit like uh, i don't have like i can i can still like take some and she was like well <laughs> yeah I, I i also heard that vacation is actually quite like the like planned or like like um what is it i guess promised vacation time is actually quite low in in the us in um eu i only know like precisely like germany we have at least 24 days of vacation every year um that is like the start i guess the starting amount i have 24 right now but you the, the older you get the more you get as well but i heard that in the us it's actually pretty pretty low like 10 days or so and if you actually like when when you want to go to uh when you want to go on a vacation it actually isn't really seen like they don't really, they don't really see it as like a something good they actually see like oh you want to you want to leave work for a week <clears throat> Yes, so yeah, yeah, so exactly. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's not really like vacation. It's more like paid time off. Yeah, for, in Germany, for example, it's like 24 days. And I think um, in the US, you either have to, to, to book unpaid <laughs> vacation time or like the planned vacation time or like the, the given vacation time that you have, which isn't that much, which actually kind of surprised me. I thought it was like similar in every country, but apparently not. <laughs> but yeah, so she asked me, well, do you have uh, a lot of stuff to do right now? And I was like, um, I ha I'm, I'm quite free right now. <laughs> and she... <laughs> She was like, well, didn't you say you can work with 3D? Or she only asked me like, oh, well, we have this problem right here. Can we can we replace the ground of these images with 3D? And I was like, well, yeah, in theory, it works, of course. Um, and it worked practically as well. It just takes a lot of time, of course. And she was like, well, I think we need your help. <laughs> so um, I guess me using or me having my 3D skills kind of save the project somehow, kind of. I don't want to like gloat or whatever, um, but I don't really know what we could have done if I couldn't have used 3D to replace the ground. Because like, so what we had to do is, first of all, we had this very, very, um, I guess, plastered ground on that, that we had to replace. So of course we had to shoot a, um, we had to shoot images with people and also with cars and the problem of course with cars is they weren't they weren't um what do you call it like matte when they don't reflect you can have a me metallic and then the other stuff <laughs> so they were they were reflective of course so they also reflected the ground all the plaster <laughs> so um it wasn't just as easy as replacing the ground we i also had to i also had to have a model to in implement the shadow of um, the person into the scene onto the ground basically and also somebody else like the co-worker that asked me had to remove the reflection of the plaster in the car itself for every single image <laughs> which uh, as you can imagine takes quite a while and then the icing on the cake was that I, as one of the two people that can do uh, video as well, like video editing, um, 
I had the job of creating GIFs of some of the recorded videos. And of course, the videos are also have the ground in them. Fortunately, we only had to, or I only, I only had to do three GIFs and only, I think, two of them had the ground in the shot. So it wasn't like super crazy difficult or whatever, or it like took quite super long. But yeah, I still had to, I had to, first of all, remove the ground in the video. Of course, the person moves, so I always have to remove, like change. Um, yeah, it, it just takes longer, of course, if stuff is moving. And also, I had to remove the reflection in the car <laughs> of the plaster ground beforehand. Um, in the video so i kind of had to figure that out it, it worked in the end it actually looked quite a, quite good um but that was a that, that was an adventure to figure out i learned a little bit more about luminance masks which can be quite helpful um yeah and in the end i think we actually finished in time or we had a few like one week more than what was planned I don't remember exactly. Of course, it took like it. Caught, the project had like way more hours than planned on it, which of course cost more for the for the uh, for the customer or the um. What is it? The um. The, yeah, no, not customer. What's, what's the other one? Client? The client? Um, and we were kind of scared whether or not we would you, you, whether we not, whether or not we would lose the the client because it like was so much more expensive. And also, um, we were already like kind of treading on um, sh like no, that's kind of weird to say. We were already like in a critical condition, I guess, when it comes to the like our um, reputation with them, because we had a few, I think, m I guess, missed projects. So I think they, the client was kind of, kind of thinking about changing their agency that they were going to work with. So they would leave us basically. Um, but in the end, it was actually pretty good. They liked our work very like like a lot um so we were able to save not only the project but also our i guess our reputation i wouldn't say like it was like super bad but still they i think they thought about switching <clears throat> which would be quite devastating for us because we i think that would, that is like one of our biggest um clients i think it was like 15 percent or so of our total income in a year which is quite a lot for us we tried to get rid of like these big i guess big clients we wanted to split up our revenue onto multiple i guess medium-sized um clients but that didn't really work first of all because of uh the rona but also um yeah i'm not really like that deep into the whole i guess uh planning or like getting clients and what what like the the philosophy is behind that but they they um told us in a meeting that they wanted to kind of spread out their revenue a little bit more just to be a little bit safer when one of them i guess leaves us for example if the biggest one that has like 50 percent of our, our whole income would leave us we would have 50 percent less income <laughs> which would be pretty crazy and pretty devastating so they um, wanted to spread it out a little bit more which we weren't able to do so far <clears throat> Maybe the the plans have shifted a little bit. I don't really know. There are rumors, or I think yeah, rumors right now that one of our quite big, like medium sized clients will leave us. Um, but so far, it didn't happen. I think they they haven't given us really like jobs for quite a while. But I think they are busy right now, so they they have to care for themselves right now. Okay, I want to let one of them up here. I want to have one that pokes out up here. So I'm going to use this one. 
Zip. There you go. So looking for no intersections. I think that's pretty good. So we have the big leaves. We have some big gaps as well. Let's fill them up with some more. So I guess we're going to just make smaller leaves. Just duplicate it and make it smaller to fill up the rest. They shouldn't be too small. You can see these ones are quite, I guess, um, quite the same in their size, all of them. So we can't go, we can't vary too much, but I think we can fill those gaps in with like a medium sized leaf, which also kind of makes the whole structure a little bit more varied, which I think can look quite good. So I'm just going to put it in the center right there. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Maybe even here we can put in some more to connect the two parts. Right there. So now that I basically have planned to finish this project this week, I already have some ideas what we can do next week. I want to, so one, one of the ideas, um, so probably one, one of the projects that I want to do next week, um, like a s small spoiler, <laughs> will be, um, I guess, a follow up of a previous project. Um, previously, I wanted to improve my likeness sculpting skills, or I guess like routine or whatever you want to call it, skills in general, like just improve my likeness sculpting. So what I did was a lightning sculpting marathon, meaning I would do a whole week, four days with four lightning scopes. So one a day. Um, yeah, which went pretty well. I learned quite a lot in that time and I want to do at least one next week, at least one uh, lightning sculpt. So we're probably going to do it earlier in the week, maybe on Tuesday. On Monday, I have something else planned, which could be very interesting not only for me but probably for everyone that is um for example sculpting um i want to go ahead and learn or like like discover some or like do some research about plugins that can increase or like make your sculpting workflow or overall blender workflow more effective more like faster just in general because i think there's still a lot of potential to increase your workflow speed and just maybe even in in like in, intuitivity <laughs> make it more intuitive um so i want to go and research some plugins that might help with the overall workflow make it faster maybe even just easier um especially when it comes to stuff like um, sculpting for example if i do um Lightning sculpting, what I usually do, especially, or what I've done for the two or for the four in the lightning sculpting marathon is I used just a sphere to start off, but usually I would use like a base mesh to start because it's just faster. Um, if I already have like a base mesh to use, I don't have to sculpt in like the head shape or the shoulders, they're already there. So I can go right into the face, for example. Um, Maybe there's, yeah, I just want to see what what I can find and then we're probably going to talk about it on uh, Monday. And then, uh, yeah, the other two days, I don't really know exactly right now. We're, we're going to see. I have like a whole list of ideas. And of course, if, if you have um, some ideas as well, you can always um, send them to me or comment them on the video, whatever. I'm mean, always always open for ideas, criticism, or whatever you want to tell me. There you go. So this is quite dense now. I like it. I think there can be there's space for one more right there. Oh, I have a, actually one more um, idea that I want to do next week. 
which is going to be more informative quite i guess dense in terms of information um but i'm not going to spoil this one i'm only going to spoil <laughs> the first two um the other one i kind of have to flesh out a little bit more i don't want to I guess promise anything i actually thought about maybe utilizing the what is it the youtube community tab where you can i guess post text and video and image uh, stuff um and I, what i what i wanted to do use it for is to i guess post a schedule or like a small i guess calendar to announce all the projects that are planned for the week um i would make like a template like a small little uh five day template and then i have like this yeah i can just write down and post whatever is planned for the week i usually plan it I, i'll i'll try to plan it maybe every like throughout the week so i have um a topic every day that I can uh, then post at the beginning of the week so everybody knows if they want to join they at least know what's going to happen um, I already have my um, my scroll bar right there which um, which shows which topic is going to be um, discussed or which topic is going to be yeah discussed next like the next day the next stream rather oh my eyes are so red <laughs> um, but I also want to maybe create some sort of calendar that I can post every week. I think that just yeah makes it more um yeah it increases the quality. I don't I don't know if I have enough info that I could put onto a website and I kind of want to keep it on YouTube itself. The less you have to click, the more people will interact with it. And if I say like, oh, dude, I have the calendar, click on this link. I think even just clicking on the link can uh, turn some people off. So I kind of want to reduce the clicks as much as possible. So if I post it on the uh, YouTube community page, you just see it in your feed. If you, I think, subscribe to me. <clears throat> Maybe I even post like finished projects to advertise with them, I guess, or like just show up what we've done on stream. <clears throat> I think that could be good as well. Okay. I think there's some more room right there. There's quite a big gap. Yeah, I think a web page is just too elaborate, <laughs> first of all, because um, I don't know. I think it, it it can be simpler, at least right now. So I just post it on the community tab. I don't even know where I get how I get to the community tab, but that should be like a big hurdle <laughs> to figure out. <clears throat> That's looking pretty good. I don't know why, but this side is kind of more like further out than the other side. This one's closer to the head or the hair. Um, do I want to fix that now? <laughs> um, what happens if I move this one with principled? No, what is it? Um, part proportional editing enabled. Ah. Well, that ruins everything because now everything is inside the hair. I think I'm just going to leave it there. Or maybe in, like right there. Yeah, that might help. Yeah, I think that's even enough. Uh... There you go. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Any other intersections? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, I think that's okay. Let's add a few more and then we can go into shading. I don't think we have to unwrap all these leaves. Um, we probably only have to unwrap this one anyway, and then we can just copy the, what is it? The, what, what? transfer the UV map, um, but we don't need to do that because we're just going to use a procedural texture or material. I could maybe even play or like put the graphic up at the beginning of the stream so if but somebody like watches or clicks on it it's gonna immediately like um gonna be shown so if there's anything interesting that that person might be interested in but like so the, the whole idea of this scrolling thing underneath me is basically just maybe somebody joins that doesn't really know what i do they just see the tile and are interested. They look into it. They might not be that interested in what I do right now, but they at least see what what's coming next. So which they might be interested in. So I don't I not only have to, I guess, convince them to watch um, on that day. I can also show the show them a little bit more of my uh, repertoire, I guess. <laughs> Maybe they're interested in that. This way, I guess I have two two shots, <laughs> which sounds kind of weird, but yeah. Oh, there's a huge gap. Hold on. Where's my leaf? There it is. Down there. Oh, we could actually... Uh, I, I don't want to spoil anything. I haven't I have another idea for next week. So maybe the next week is already already planned. Planned all the way through. Although I kind of want to... Yeah, uh, I'll see. We'll see. Friday, I have a, uh, a, um, I don't want to say date, that sounds kind of weird. I have a, um, I guess, gaming session with one of my buddies that I haven't really played with for quite a while now. We've been playing Destiny quite a while. I, that was actually the clan that I joined after all my friends stopped playing. Um, he was basically the person that I played the most with, probably, or like the one of the two. Um, yeah, and he kind of asked me whether or not I want to play some Terraria, because we played before, but we never really finished it. So he asked me whether or not I want to, I would be down to just try again. Uh, yeah, and I accept it, because Terraria is always fun. And um, playing with friends, with friends is even more fun. Usually I am like, as long as I play with um, people I know, then almost every game can be fun. So I don't really have like a, like some of my friends are like, no, if it's not a competitive game, then I don't want to play it, which um, can be quite annoying if you're not really like a competitive person like me. 
um then having to like finding a good game that you can play with them is kind of annoying or frustrating rather so having at least like one or two more people that are more down for like more fun games for example is definitely uh helpful helpful like uh a good mix i guess Whoa, I moved something, but what? This one? This one? Oh, I moved this one, right? I guess we could just move it back. Wait, no. We moved it, like, holy. Hold on. There you go. There you go. But it's, it's still wrong. <clears throat> There you go. Okay. I'm just going to leave it there. You don't really see the branch anyway. Okay. There you go. We could maybe add a few more, but I don't think it's going to change a whole lot. So I'm just going to leave it there. I want to add like a small band to the center or to this part, like adding something to it. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what I thought about maybe some sort of band wrapped around the two or like the knot to increase its, I guess, stabili stability a little bit more. Or like, um, yeah, keep it keep it together. Um, so, oh. what could we do? Or rather, how could we do it? it? It's supposed to be very... It's of course supposed to be wrapped around. So we kind of have to either sculpt it to make it look real. I don't really know if we can use the shrink wrap modifier. I don't think so. Because then the geometry, if we wrap it around, will just go inside of itself. Which of course doesn't look that good. Mm. Let's see. Oh, I have an idea what we could do. We could actually just use uh, cylinders. Could we? Maybe. So let's see. If we use a cylinder first. There you go. Oh, that's a big cylinder. We turn it, of course. There you go. So it has to wrap around the whole thing first. Maybe we could make it wider. There you go. Can we just like these three pieces and then separate them? Oh, if you want to separate stuff, you can press the uh, slash button on the numpad to, I guess, hide everything else. Pressing the slash button again will bring everything back. Can be very, very helpful, especially for these very, very, I guess, detailed models where you want to go into more detail. Okay. Okay, I think what I want to do is I will remove these faces. I will make this wider. Oh, locally. There you go. Maybe like this. Okay, I want to make this wider in this direction as well. Otherwise, or just so everything is like outside of the cylinder. There you go. Now I want to increase the density or like just put in subdivisions. There you go. Now we have some more vertices. Let's set it to three. But then let's try the... What is it? The shrink wrap modifier. A near surface point. No, let's use project and surface negative and positive. Which object? Oh, can we even use two? Let's see. Oh, we could probably join the two. Yeah, we can... We can Oh, hold on. We have to go back. We had the two... Yeah, the trash... The trash branches. 
that had geometry. This one? Yeah. Trash two. We can use these two, combine them. Wait, where's the other one? Oh, there it is. Control J to join them, so now they're one object. Now we can use the shrink wrap, shrink wrap on these on this object. Hold on, where is it? There it is. What I mean is now we can go ahead and use target this one. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> what is that? Uh, yeah, we can still change that later. So first of all, why does it look so weird? First of all, it's quite strong. Can we change the... No, we can't. We can bring in a smoothing, though. What is that? Hold on. So if we move this edge, for example, or just move these edges around, we could maybe fix this weird bug. I don't even know where it comes from. What? <laughs> Uh, or we'll just use soft wrap. How about that? Let's see if that works. Okay, so let's apply the subdivision. I'm going to duplicate it so I have a, I guess, backup. There you go. Let's go ahead and use soft wrap. We need the source mesh, which is this one. We have the target mesh. We also have snapping strength. Let's set that to zero for now. Okay, let's save. Let's hit play. You can see what soft wrap does. We can move this thing around or not. Why not? Oh. Hold on. Stop. There you go. Apply the subdivisions. Oh, we have to remove the reset. There you go. There you go. Now we have some more resolution or more density. We can add some more just to make it even. That helps the overall deformations of the object of the object. There you go. Okay, so now if we hit play, hopefully it works. Can we move it around? Why is it? Oh, it's paused. There you go. Woo. <laughs> okay, now we can move it around like a uh, like a wrap, some sort of band. That's a reset. Now, if we increase snapping strength. Okay. What is going on there? Why is it going everywhere? Okay, let's reset. Why, why does that happen? That's probably also what was like the problem that we had with the other one, like with the uh, the the soft wrap or no shrink wrap. What happened? <laughs> Why is it turning in into itself? Okay, that's what it looks like. Kind of weird. Maybe we have to join the two. Like actually, we could do that. It shouldn't be too hard. So let's do that. That could help. So if we go ahead and set this to flat right now, we can actually see the geometry. We can then use to actually, like if you have two objects joined, which are still, I guess, individual geometry, you can see it right here. If I just increase the selection, you can see I don't select the other branch. They're still individual geometry pieces. If you want to join them, the easiest way to do, to do that would probably be to use the remesh modifier. And then increase the no decrease the voxel size there you go oh i pressed one one too many times i think yep it froze let's see if it actually recovers <laughs> i'm gonna drink something real quick
It's crazy how, how red my eyes are. I couldn't even replicate it. I tried to 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 get the same effect like off stream and it didn't even work. It was like so weird. It's so red right now. <laughs> okay. Never mind. It's still frozen, so yeah. You know, if it's still hold is it still frozen? Yep. Yeah. Okay, well time for some Let's see. Do we do we have a frozen emoji? <laughs> what is that? Oh, a rose. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I was looking for these uh, the cow emojis. Oh, this one. <laughs> oh no, I forgot to record again, so I have to download the stream as well. I think I have like 15 that I now have to download. Well, whatever. I think it's time to restart. I think we've lost Blender. Blender is dead. Let's uh, reopen. That's why you should always save a lot, especially when you go into new <laughs> new areas. You try out new stuff. You should always save before you do it. And also, you should do like create a duplicate so you don't lose your uh, object. Or you, if you want to go back, you can still do that. Working, what is it? Working um, non destructively. Okay, there you go. So let's try again. Um, oh, re topology, I mean, uh, re construction, <laughs> remesh. Okay, let's 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 do it slow. I think I was like at point oh one. Five, four, three, two, one. Apply. And there you go. Now they're connected. Okay, so let's use software app now. Hopefully it works now. <laughs> Play. Okay. Oh, is it paused? Yep. What is it doing? <laughs> I oh I have one more theory on what is actually happening. Do we have to flip the normals? Maybe. Aha! Look at that. Okay. <clears throat> Let's increase the strength to full. Okay. Maybe not to full. <laughs> Let's bring it back. Let's put it to 0.5. So, okay. Actually, no, I'm going to put it to full and then I can use change some smoothing options here. Okay, that looks kind of weird. Maybe I can move it around a little bit, kind of spread it out. Of course, the... Um, the geometry for this band was, I guess, had more base than was what could wrap around this object. So we have some of these overlapping spots, which kind of wiggle around. Maybe we can fix those by changing a few settings. What about smoothing it? Okay, that's not really smoothing, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> Quad smooth. No. Oh, I have an idea how we could actually do it, but uh, topolit what to topologic smooth? Okay. What did it do now? It's like all over the place. Wait, wh where's the beginning? Where's the end? <laughs> what? What? What happened? Did I split it in two? 
wasn't that a cylinder? Oh yeah, it still is. It's just spread out like so far now. Oh. Okay, well this is definitely too far out. Maybe we should change this back. Let's set it to zero. Let's reset, let's reset. Actually, yeah, let's reset. Okay, let's try again. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna scale this a little bit smaller. What about what if we set it make it smaller than the geometry that we're gonna wrap it around? Let's see. Nope, wrong axis. There you go. Nope, wrong axis. There you go. Like that. It should stretch, but we'll see. Is it paused? No, okay. Aha! Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> okay. There you go. Perfect. A perfect wrap. Let's um, stop. Okay, so now <clears throat> hopefully it works. Let's see if my plan actually um, succeeds or works. So what I want to do now is um, by using this add-on, it, it creates a soft, I mean a shape key. So if I change this back to zero, you can see whoop, it goes back to its original shape. We can apply the shape key by just hitting apply and there you go now it's the geometry itself let's see if we can use the solidify modifier to make this like some sort of wrapped like band that is wrapped around this thing looks pretty good um hmm I think that's that's a good start. I want to do multiple ones, so that's 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 a good beginning. <clears throat> um, so let's do the next one. Of course, the the band has to wrap around multiple times, so I'm just gonna do, do multiple layers. Should I apply this? Probably. You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna make a backup of this as well. There you go. We probably have to do this, make this a little bit wider, otherwise it's just gonna stretch too much. Although, can it stretch too much? Probably, but we'll see. There you go. We'll set it to this. Oh, okay. We have to enable or yeah, bring in bring in the subdivisions. Although we can actually make this easier on ourselves. Oh, let's bring in the modifier. We can put in a subdivision in the center, which will hopefully spread out the the faces a little bit better. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Let's see if this works. Okay, let's see. Nope, we have to select the target mesh, which is this first cylinder. Start. Oh, why did it collapse into itself? Well, oh, smoothing, that's why. Okay. There you go. That's the second layer. I want to move it over here a little bit. Oh. Oh, come on. Okay, perfect. It, it's kind of jiggling around because this one is kind of weird, but whatever. Should work. 
apply. There you go. We need another solidify in the other direction. There you go. Okay, perfect. So that's the second layer. I'm going to do one more. <clears throat> we will duplicate this one as well. Wait, that's the wrong one, right? Nope. Okay. There you go. Apply. Nope. Wrong. I saved. Okay, well, that's that's good. There you go. Apply. Then we will... You know what? I'm going to duplicate these two as well, just so they're... I guess I have a backup of the, both of them <laughs> on top of each other. So now we can hopefully just join them. Now they are one piece. Not the enemy, but actually uh, geometrically. Okay, now we need one more. There you go. Position it in the right place. There you go, okay. Is it too too short? I don't really know. I'm just gonna leave it there. Or we need to bring in the cut in the center, apply the subdivisions. Looks pretty good. We have to retarget these parts. <clears throat> there you go. Anything else in front? Do we need that? Nope. Moving, not really necessary. Okay, let's start. Oh. Okay, it's getting quite a... What is that? Oh, there it is. It lives. Oh. Why is it so weird? Probably because it's too short. Hold on. <laughs> or because there are two layers. That's probably it. That's probably why it's so weird. What if we smooth it? Or what if we pull it out? Does that work? Oh, that's not pulling out. Come on. Give me my geometry. No, what if we smooth it? Oh, well, that's kind of small now. We could retopologize this to make it easier. Yeah, let's do that. Stop. Reset. Wire don't need it. In front, remove it. There you go. Okay. So because we have like the, both of them disconnected, um, if we need both of them disconnected again, we can just arrange or like bring them back in. I want to remesh this one to make it easier for the soft wrap to work. Otherwise, we have two geometries on top of each other, which kind of, I guess, confuse the soft wrap plugin. Can we make this smaller? Oh, okay. Kind of crazy how precise you can go. Point two should be enough. Yeah, there you go. Let's try that again. Oh, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Okay, let's try that again. Let's do it smooth. I mean, slowly. Hello? Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, it has no... No, it does. Hold on. Start. Oh, unpause. Is it unpause now? Yep. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Is that, isn't that perfect? I would say that's perfect. Look at that. The perfect wrap around. <clears throat> okay. You know, actually, it should actually be 
not perfectly wrapped although if it's like a hmm yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna change a few things few things with this before i um i guess combine all of them i think but this one looks pretty good so we're gonna apply it there you go let's bring in a make it solid <laughs> oh wrong direction there you go look at that isn't that beautiful okay so <clears throat> um i want to bring back these two i'm going to parent this one to the first one so if i move this one we're going to move the small one as well i think this one inherited the the pivot point of the first object if, when we joined them so if i now arrange them using the arrange plugin da, 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 there you go they're perfectly on top of each other now we can get rid of this retopologized mesh and there you go we have three layers of uh, band or like of this uh what do you want to call it like this rubber band problem is it's not a rubber band it's more like a i guess sticky band <laughs> because it's like perfectly wrapping around the surface so it's even going into the crease where usually if you like wrap something around two objects that have like a gap between them you would basically just um go straight so we could probably kind of imitate that um how is the question and i know the answer <laughs> so let's uh, do it first of all i'm gonna save and then let's go so first of all actually i want to try if it's possible with a modifier if i use the smooth modifier i think the problem is that it's going to remove some of that like it's going to change the shape as well which isn't really beneficial for it i just want to change a very certain spot so we'll just go into sculpting and there you go we're going to just smooth it so we can pull out the geometry isn't that beautiful We can also use the move brush to move it out so it's not intersecting with the lower uh, layers. So now it's just briefly following the structure, which I think looks a little bit more realistic. There you go. Oh, we lost this small little um, edge right there. I'm going to bring it back. There you go. Yeah, that's pretty good. There you go. I think that's look, that looks better than just like full on wrapped exactly around the, the surface of um, these branches. <clears throat> we have to do that with the other ones as well. I think maybe we don't even have to do it for the the lowest one, but at least for the for the for the yellow one for the second layer sculpting. There you go. Oh, hold on. Oh, we applied all the settings right. Oh, that's a problem. Do we still have the one with the modifier? Oh, there you go. That's why I duplicated them so I have them in a backup. Okay, so let's use this one. Um, I want to bring back the modifier because I don't want to, I guess, have a double layer. I don't want to have it solid. I just want to. <clears throat> I will. I want to be able to remove the modifier, so I'm just gonna use the align tool to bring back the first version with the modifier still applied. Remove the other one. I'm just gonna move it out. Maybe we'll use it later. So I'm just gonna put it into my collection. <laughs> I'm actually gonna unparent this keep transform there you go wait hold on i 
Okay. Let's go into this one. Time to smooth. See, this looks way more natural than just perfectly following the structure of the underlying surface. We kind of have to adjust this part, but we can do that later or soon. We're not going to change this purple. We're going to change or this pink um, object. We're going to change the, the blue one. There you go. Sculpt. We're just going to pull it out. Zip. There you go. And I think it looks even more natural if these strips aren't perfectly on top of each other. You can see they're kind of disconnected at some point, especially here, for example. I think that just adds a little more realism to it, um, which of course helps. We can even go into the lowest part, the lowest um, wrap. I want to bring back the modifier, so I'm just going to align it again. There you go. Because I wanna... Hmm, should I smooth this one as well? I think I should. Just a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that. Do it the same on this side. We, especially here, we can smooth some. Now it looks way better. Look at that, isn't that perfect? Okay, perfect. Oh, this side as well. Okay, perfect. So now we have three layers. Now we can add the last one. <clears throat> um, how do we add the last one? So we could probably make a strip. Yeah, yeah, I have an idea how we could do this. Okay. So I'm going to grab my cylinder. We will remove these lower parts. Although, we're not going to remove it just yet. First of all, I'm going to fit it right onto these bands. There you go. We're going to use one more. What is it? The soft wrap tool. Oh. There you go. Make it thinner. Okay, so now we apply the subdivision. Before we do that, though, we're going to bring in the cut right there. Apply. There you go. Now we will, we will remove parts of um, this band. I will probably go all the way up to here. Maybe even there. Select this face, then we're going to go all the way back, maybe to here, going to the other side, and we will select all this, like going from this face to this face. We're going to select this face with shift and control, which select all these faces, which we, <laughs> I wanted, I wanted to select exactly the opposite side. So we're just going to invert it, I guess. There you go, remove the faces. And now we have only one side. Now what we want to do? So we'll go ahead and use or we'll select the lower edge right there and we will pull it down maybe up to there there you go <clears throat> we need to add some subdivisions probably like just as many as there are on the band itself which is quite a lot <laughs> maybe like this is that too much? No, that looks pretty okay. It doesn't have to be like perfectly the exact amount. They're still selected, which is perfect. We have to select the ones down here as well. Hold on, I'm going to select them in face. No, in vertices select. There you go. So we have to make a vertex, vertex, vertex group. And now we can use this vertex group to exclude these vertices from the soft wrap 
simulation, which we do in the soft wrap settings. Um, there we go. Change this cylinder. Which one should we? Oh, we have to combine all of them, right? <laughs> okay, let's do it. You know, I'm just gonna duplicate them. Oh. Okay. Assign everything. Then we join them. Then we use remesh. There you go. Perfect. We use the remesh object as the, I guess, soft wrap simulation object. Um, we have to select both of them. Wait, 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 wait. There you go. We can bring them into one view. There you go. So exclude them from everything else. Perfect. Now, target object, this one. Um, snapping group, which will be group, this one. I think now we exclude the ones down there, hopefully. So, which means if we now press start. Aha, look at that. Perfect. Look at that. Now we have this uh, dingly dangly. Oh. Ding ding dang, oh, come on. Why can I? Oh, it's. Wait, what's going on here? I just want to move <laughs> the thing. <laughs> okay, well, apparently it doesn't work. But it, I mean, it works visually. So, um, yeah, perfect. So that's going to be like the small little wrap that's going to hang off of um, this knot right there. Um, yeah, we can now stop, apply, there you go. Hit apply again, just to be sure. Perfect. In front, remove that. Actually, I want to go back into the... Oh, oh, dude. What is it called? Cylinder 29, there you go. We need a solidify modifier, set it to plus one, of course. There you go. We could probably also use a smooth, smooth modifier to make it smoother. Although this looks kind of weird now. Although it looks pretty, yeah, I think it, no, I'm just gonna sculpt it. There you go. Perfect. Look at that. We can also give this some, some structure, I guess. Let's see, how can we do this? What should it be? Should it be some sort of wrapping or like the, the, this, the sticky, like some sort of sticky band or more like a band-aid like, um, I guess, band? Should we... Hmm, how can we do that? We could maybe... Hmm. Hold on, I wanna push these pieces together. Or, mm, yeah, at least somewhat, so it looks kind of more natural, it's flowing in the wind. I think I'm gonna use some sort of um band-aid like like fiber like um material for this there you go there you go Easy. 
isn't that beautiful maybe we could even add some more creases in the center pretty simple maybe not perfectly natural but uh, adds a little bit more flair to it there you go perfect oh let's remove cylinder 29 there you go Oh, what's that? Oh, that's the, the branch. Where's my branch? Branch trash too. <laughs> there you go. Let's look at the final result. Oh. Beautiful, exactly. No, B. Yeah, well, <laughs> is that from the movie where he um he had he becomes like God? He has the power of God. Is that the the movie? I don't remember. Okay. Oh, we have to do one more one more thing. Let's do it. I want to make these more natural. So what did we have to do? We have to duplicate them first. Um, let's call them. Let's call this one. Back up the other one as well. The other branch duplicate this one. Bra back up or oh, not back up. Uh, what, do, what do we call it? Branch R? There you go. Okay. Let's go ahead. And first of all, I'm going to set it to uh, flat so I know what the geometry looks like. We have not enough right now. Actually, we do. Do we? Probably. What we're going to do is we're going to convert this into a mesh. We're going to add a subdivision surface modifier just to add a little bit more geometry. I also want to bring in a smooth modifier to smooth these edges because the edges are very, very wrong. Oh, that's the problem that we have. You know what? Before we add anything, we will need a remesh. Yeah. Problem is now we can't add um, subdivisions. Let's save real quick. I want to see if it freezes again if I set it to 0 0.009. Please, 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 please. <laughs> oh no. Maybe 0.01 is the maximum. <clears throat> yeah, I don't want to wait this long or not like as long as we've been waiting before. So I'm just going to close it now and try again. Please close the window. Thank you. Okay. File. There you go. Okay. We will. We won't apply it. We don't need to. What if we smooth it? What does it look like? Exactly the same. Oh, we have to enable it here. There you go. That's what it looks like. Smooth. Um, what, what about other... Oh, okay. Of 
Okay, this works as well. Scale, sharpness, threshold, smooth shading. What about now using a smooth modifier? Changing the intensity. Oh, okay, well, maybe we should use the other option. Okay. What is adaptivity? Okay. Okay, so why I did that was the, I want to use displacements. Oh, <laughs> a perfect sausage. <laughs> okay, hold on. We need a cloud texture. There's already a texture here. We need that though, so we need a new one. We probably need clouds though. Oh, we could maybe use Voronoi, which looks kind of weird right now. We have to do a few changes. Are there clamp color ramp? There you go. We set this to 0.5. What is it? No, we have set this to 0.5. Value of 0.5, which is the exact point or the, the, the position where the vertice was before. White means the position where it was where it's gonna be afterwards. Or like it pushes it out. Black means it pushes it in. Okay, we're going to decrease the strength first. Oh, maybe there. Let's set it to 0.5. Then I want to increase the white parts. No, hold on. Gray parts. Ah. Okay, well, these rings look kind of weird. So I guess we're going to use a... Um... Oh, there are different options, right? Okay, Chevy Chef. <laughs> no, they just generate your rings. I don't want to have rings. Okay, I think clouds is the best option. Clouds is always the best option. Oh, there it is. That's what I wanted, but not quite. There you go. Look at that. Making it more natural. I think it's too strong right now, so we're going to do change that. What about point 0.05? Ooh. Okay. We can also change the depth to make it more detailed, I guess. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Although I don't really know. Okay, hold on. Let's see. What what is a what is it? A um laurel branch? What does it look like? Pretty straight actually, so we don't have to have that many bumps. Okay, now let's add like a general, I guess, displacement, like very, very weak though. Displacement, oh, we probably should do that before the other one. Make a new texture. What if you if you have two displacement textures on one object, um, it can be confusing to when you use the exact, or when you're working on the right texture you have this this like this drop down menu right here where you can switch between the first and second modifier so if i switch to the first one you can see the clouds texture is like uh displayed if i go back to the other one there's still the image or movie uh texture applied i guess not nothing basically if we bring it back to the clouds we have a second cloud texture Oh, 
Okay. Hmm. Oh. Negative? Looks pretty good. Probably uh, I want to do a few changes to the texture though. To make it more even. There you go. Perfect. Let's set it to smooth. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Let's go back to the rest. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Let's do the same on this side. Did we... Did I? Okay. Convert. Oh, yeah. Convert. We need a remesh. Wait. I can just copy it. Okay. There you go. Perfect. Easy. I actually want to change one more thing. I want to go ahead and select one of these vertices, use the proportion editing or maybe even linear and just make this not perfectly straight. There you go. Other side as well. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, look at that. I don't know. I think I'm going to leave it there. I think that looks okay. We could put something here, but... Mm. I think that's okay. Okay, so let's um, do some organizing here. Everything's everything's like scattered all over the place. So the, these things, do we need them anymore? You know what? I'm going to make a new file. Ne the next step, I guess, 11a, I mean 12a. There you go. Now we can delete all these pieces. If we still need them, we can just go into the, the last save file. We also... Do we need the modules anymore? Yeah, we can leave them there. What do we have? The base? Okay. <laughs> oh. You know, the cloth is quite... Uh, <laughs> has not that much detail so if we want we could actually work on that some more actually the base as well um but yeah i don't know okay so let's finish the laurel wreath first so i'm gonna just apply everything because we can go back to the previous state if we want to i just want to make everything i guess final could probably hold on i mean so it's standing on a box right now otherwise it would be even lower um the cable is quite short that's the problem right now i could probably put it right here maybe but i might have to yeah i mean i can i can look into that uh, off stream do you think um i should put it over me or like maybe on eye eye level oh i don't think the red eyes disappear we could try hold on Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh. <laughs> where am i there you go no they're still there the problem is that the, the red eyes come from um the light shining right into my eye like now they disappear no they did they don't even do that so they come from the light shining right into my eye and 
the inside of the eye is red so because the light is, is like part of the cam like the webcam i can't disconnect the light from uh, the cam like the webcam so i think the red light the red eyes always have to be there maybe there's some sort of filter that i can use but i haven't really i i looked into it before but i haven't really found any useful um useful filters Yeah, I ha like I have my my desk lamp on the left. Um, I would have have to have another light, <laughs> but I would have to get one first. Whoa! What is that? That is unacceptable. <laughs> I'm just gonna get red light so everything's red. That's the solution. Exactly, and I'm gonna paint my face red as well, so it's in, 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 uh, completely red. That's gonna be the, the solution. Or I'm just gonna grab myself some uh, Naruto um, red, um, what is it, red eye, the thing that you can put in your eyes to make your iris look red or like a different color. I'm just gonna grab red ones so I have like full red eyes. <laughs> right now it's a mix between blue and red. Then it's gonna be full on, full on red, or I'll just grab one that it, that makes like that removes my iris, so it looks like I have like very very small eyes. That's another trick I learned. If you want to apply all the modifiers on an object or on multiple objects at once, you can just select all of them and then they convert to mesh and then now all the modifiers are applied. Problem is we still have all these uh, curves. Oh, that's those are quite a few, <laughs> quite a few leaves. So hold on. Where is this leaf? Wait, what? Where's my leaf? The leaf is gone. Oh, it's parented, right? In the curve. I have to unparent all of them. Okay, hold on. Let's try that again. Oh, there was one more with a modifier. There you go. So if I select multiple ones, if I press Alt P, clear parent and keep transformation, they should stay there and get unparented. There you go. Okay, that's what I wanted. Now I can remove the the curve without the leaves leaving the scene. The crime scene of the murdered modifiers. Okay, we're almost there, we're almost there. There you go. Alt P, clear parent and keep transformation. There you go. We have all the leaves selected. We're gonna move them into the uh, leaf collection. Laurel wreath. Is it this one? Yeah. What do you mean with we can buy new GPU soon? <laughs> 
Oh, would you mean uh, like the world? That's gonna be like stuck. That would be uh, pretty good. Definitely, but I mean, yeah. Oh, okay. I just <laughs> didn't even see that. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, probably, but I don't think so. Didn't they make, do, didn't they do some sort of update where they, um, wait, what ha what's happening? I, f I think I forgot a few. Um, didn't they do an update where they reduced the effectivity of gra NVIDIA graphics cards for like crypto mining? Isn't that, is that a thing? I just read the headline, so I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Well, one can hope. Oh, this one. I don't, I don't know if that really... I think there's like so much hype right now. Um, I think there's so much hype right now around crypto and whatnot that there's just gonna... There's never gonna be a graphics card available anymore except for when you want to buy it for like a thousand or maybe even two thousand euros or dollars or whatever. Emoji coins. Do you mean with every effort has gone away? Do you mean like... I don't know. The effort to... make it harder for people to use GPUs? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, we're close. We're close. We're almost there. Just a few more leaves. Ah. So what do you really need for Bitcoin or like for crypto mining? Isn't that just like the the overall like functionality of the uh, the graphics card, the GPU? Or is there some sort of special... Uh, component that is used for crypto mining because if they just reduce the effectivity overall wouldn't that just make the graphics card worse which doesn't really <laughs> solve the issue There you go. Easy. Okay, we have a few more leaves, I think, in here. There you go. Wait, we have curves as well. Where are the curves? There are no curves. Where are the curves? Oh, there it is. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, this one, and then... Ah. Okay. Okay. 
This little rascal here. You're not gonna hide from me. Oh. There's one more. Oh, it's underneath. That's that's hard to see. Oh, even modifiers are still not applied. Well, well, well. Okay. There are a few more, four more. Nope, three more. That's one of them. Wait, that is so obvious. I just didn't see it. Over there. Which one is that? Wait, this one? Yeah. One more. There it is. Okay, perfect. Finally. <clears throat> Okay, so let's move all the leaves into the correct collection. We have some more stuff here. What is that? A cylinder? Oh, that's the band. Let's call it... Um... It's not called band, right? It's called like a ribbon. No, that's not a ribbon. It's like a wrap, wrapper. <laughs> let's call it wrapper with a W. Wrapper one. Wrapper two. Wrapper three. And wrapper four. We have the two branches, which we'll just call laurel branch. There you go. And laurel branch L. L and R. Okay. We have the leaves, which I'm not going to call. <laughs> I'm not going to name them anything. What is that? We have a sphere. What is the sphere? Oh. Taurus. We don't need Taurus anymore. Wrapper. Okay, perfect. What is this? Oh, I actually called it wrapper. <laughs> okay, perfect. There you go. Beautiful. Let's bring this one back to... No, we can actually delete it because we have the component already there. The module. Let's uh, hide the modules. I don't want to see them anymore. There you go. I'm going to move that all the way up to the top. Okay. Do we have anything that is... Okay, we need the foot down there. The foot can stay. It's on smooth, right? Yeah. The foot L, we don't really need. We can't we can see it. So we're just going to remove it. Okay. Retopology, looking good. Oh, there was one more thing that I want to add. Okay, let's do that real quick. So, let's go to the topology. And um, I wanted to grab this ring right here. Actually, no, hold on. I want to remove the arm real quick. The arms, there you go. I wanted to actually to grab these parts. This one first. Duplicate it. Separate it. Okay. Then use a solidify solidifier. Okay. 
to create this cover. Why is it not going out? What is this? Oh. There you go. So it's not perfect. We have to do a few adjustments. First of all, what is this? Hold on. So this is supposed to be like a better connection between the arm and the uh, the sculpt, the transition basically. This is very weird, so I'm gonna <laughs> fix it. We're gonna make it fully, like perfectly round. Otherwise it's just gonna look weird. There you go. This side looks okay. Now, if we bring if we bring back the arm or the shoulder, we can see we have a nice connection. This one is kind of off, so we could probably even extend this a little bit. Although, mm, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it there. Hold on, let me go back to the, the retopology model. Oh, I actually want to bring in more, more, I guess, cover. So I'm going to select more. <laughs> and now that I remember this function, I'm just going to use it all the time because it's so useful. There you go. Uh, let's bring in more. So I'm just going to add oh, this piece as well. And then back here, let's add this one as well. There you go. Duplicate, separate, selection. There you go. Let's fix these uh, few pieces here. Okay, this one is also kind of weird, so I'm just going to bring it back all the way back here. There you go. Oh, there's one more right there, this weird corner. There you go. <clears throat> oh, hell yeah, another bot. Hold on. See ya. Okay. I don't want to reset the chat because then everything would be deleted. I would rather just leave this pathetic little worm in here. <laughs> okay. So can we do the same? Oh yeah, we can. That's why I set it up like this. So we can just select this ring and these parts here as well go duplicate so uh oh, separate there you go
what is the solidified 22 okay there you go look at that okay we could maybe make this a little bit smoother let's go into sculpt mode oh okay well that probably doesn't work that well no i'm gonna just leave it like this okay let's bring everything back yeah see now it's like an actual transition between the two pieces of course we will need to um still apply shaders but we can do that now okay so let's set this back to one four to one and four to one let's go to material preview hopefully this doesn't crash because <laughs> now everything is visible Oh, it still has the texture applied. The leaves still have the texture applied to it. We could maybe even use that. Ooh. So laggy. Yeah, maybe we could use that. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna hide the uh the sculpt i mean the retopology otherwise it's just gonna be so laggy the sculpt as well yeah look at that just way easier okay so let's go into the leaves first first of all shader i'm gonna yeah screw this there you go oh wrong interface there you go okay so let's we call this laurel leaves we need to go to the gold shader first we're going to copy this we're going to bring it into the laurel leaves shader clipboard is empty well isn't that a thing how about we copy this copy there you go Okay, now. Oh. Okay, so we can see some irregularities already, but I want to bring in this texture as a bump map. So what we have to do is we have to combine the already existing bump map with this leaf texture. Oh, that's not what I wanted. So we'll have to convert this into a bump map first. Which means we have to gonna we have to switch it to black and white. There you go. Um, I think I wanna. Okay, first of all, before I change anything, I will go ahead and make a like a good unwrap, so the textures aren't like screwed up. right there do they go all the way around nope they don't oh this is quite quite close nope there you go mark seam okay maybe this works better so if we unwrap this now maybe it'll look better let's see okay Oh, I know why. Well, we probably have to just reposition this texture real quick. Okay, they're all in the wrong direction.
Wait, what? Where am I? Now they're completely gone. Hold on. Okay, we're gonna do it slowly so we don't lose them. You know what? I'm gonna do it differently. We're gonna make it easier on ourselves. We're just gonna go into the UV editor what are they called again these leaves there you go so which one's which side i guess it doesn't really matter we have to set up both one like both sides i think this one is the front front uh front side Okay, this looks pretty good. Although almost, almost pretty good. We're gonna have to move it ourselves just to make it fit properly. There you go, other side as well. There you go. Now the two other sides, we're just gonna, I guess, position them in there as well. Although, oh, we have both sides now, which can work actually. So what we can do with this side, we can just paste it onto the other leaf. I think that's the other side of the leaf. So we're just gonna use this one. There you go. If we look at it now, we still have this weird stretching going on. No, we don't. Perfect. Trying to keep the shape. You know, there you go. Down here as well, although this looks pretty good already. Okay, so now, now comes the magic. Hopefully. This one is now properly set up. You can see the edges look fine. There's no weird stretching going on, which we're gonna apply to the other ones as well, hopefully. We're gonna try it first. We're gonna select this one and then the other one, of course. The one that we wanna apply the UV maps from. Yeah, from. Link, uh, control L to link, transfer UV maps. And there you go. Perfect. So we have to do that with all of them. Da, 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 da. Oh, there you go. There you go. We need to select the leaf that is the parent or like the, I guess the, the master. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? We have now, we even have two sides, so this side looks different from this side. Perfect. Okay, so <clears throat> we need to use this as a bump map. So what I want to do is I think I will switch this, flip the colors, so the black is there. Black means it goes down. We're going to set this white to gray, probably. Oh, no, we're going to leave it white. I want to see what it looks like now if you just apply this bump map. Oh, hello. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> that actually looks pretty good. Yeah, now I'm applying the golden color. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? 
You can even see these small veins there. Nice shiny. Let's see what it looks like in rendered view. Oh, look at that. I want to make it stronger, though. I also want to remove these this weird, um, I guess, this pixelated texture. How can I do that? I think I can just increase the white to make them smoother. There you go. Although then it kind of removes. You know what? I'm going to leave the structure. Leave the structure. You get it? <laughs> okay. I'll stop. Okay. Um, we can also use this for a um, grunt map. Before we do that, though, I want to increase the strength of this. So we're just going to use color. No, we're going to use a converter math note. What do you mean with test? Is there something wrong? Oh no. I think it starts again. Does it? Nope, goes back up. Okay, I think it's fine now. Did, did you try the uh, latency test? <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it really. Like, I like it a lot. Um, so what we can do? So usually, um, oh, what, what's yeah? Tell me. Um, so, um, the cutter ramp reduces the value. So, um, a image always has a value. If you convert this image to a black and white, white, black and white image. The white parts will be one. That could be, yeah, yeah, my maybe, maybe. Um, so white means one and black means zero. That's the span that you can see in the color ramp. But some images have a higher, um, have higher values, for example, EXRs. They have higher values which will be crushed down into just zero to one if you use a color ramp. So I think this image by itself just has um, like values from zero by to one. So if we want to increase the bump strength, we can use a multiply um, node. The multiply node you like grabs the values zero to one and then just multiplies them by the, the value that we can plug in here. So we can put it to multiply and then we for example, if you put it to 1, you can see the original bump. If you set it to 10, there's no change because I think the bump map, uh, oh, the strength of the bump map is so, so low that we probably don't even need the multiply modifier. Hold on. So if we increase the strength maybe to 0.2, ooh, that looks good. <laughs> what about 1? Okay, that's too strong. Yeah, let's set it to point 0.2. I think point 0.2 looks good. We could also maybe go into the um, the image itself and smooth it out a little bit in Photoshop. But I kind of like the structure. If we don't go too close, it doesn't look too pixelated. Um, so we can probably keep it. Although I want to probably do some macro shots, which will probably... I think I'm going to smooth them just a little bit. So let's do that real quick. We're going to go into, we're going to shop, shop some photos. Hold on. There you go. Silver. Oh, yeah, we're gonna, we can try that uh, in a second. I'm just going to change the uh, the thing first, the, the image. There you go. MSI Create Award. Um, material. What is it called again? I don't really know. There it is. Okay, so. <clears throat> um, yeah, so what I want to do, usually that that happens um, if you if you create a bump map, you always, or if you create a bump map off of a, an image, usually what you would do, you would like just blur it a little bit, which just kind of um, as you can see right there, it's very pixelated, so we can see these, this pixel, pixelation in the in the texture as well. 
Um, I'm kind of wondering. You can you can increase the resolution of an object or like not of an object of an image using Photoshop. I don't really know if that moves the texture though, which shouldn't be a big problem. We could try it. Mm. So if you go to image, image size, we can go uh, recalculate. If we set this to 72 times two, for example, we double the resolution. And then we can see, we can smooth it out a little bit. Automatic, nope. Ooh. And we can kind of see which one looks the best. Oh, this one's very pixelated. This one looks pretty good, bilinear. The first one is just like trying to keep... Oh, we can remove... Oh, this looks, this looks pretty good. Either this one or bilinear, in my opinion. I think I like keep details the most with 100%, I guess, noise reduction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that. Now we have double the resolution. Let's save the image. Before we do that, though, I want to... Should I smooth it? Should we smooth it even more? Let's do that. No, I'm going to save it first. We're going to look at it. And then if it's still too much, we can uh, reduce it or smooth it. We're going to actually save this in the textures folder because this is now a texture that we're going to use. Laurel leaves. Bump. There you go. Let's switch back to Blender. Okay, so we need to, of course, relink it. So we're just going to open it again. Okay, it seems like everything's fine. I think if if the resolution doesn't change, the UVs don't move. So we, yeah, we can just exchange them. And they still look pretty pixelated. Um, let's try silver first, and then we can go back into the the into Photoshop. Okay, let's see. Oh, this one's bronze. <laughs> Hold on, use bronze. No, that's rather gold. Like, okay, let's try silver or platinum. We could maybe even make it wider. Yeah, it's a little bit more bland, maybe. Maybe we could... No. Roughness? No. That's, that's silver. I definitely like more, like gold more. Um, also, it fits more into the theme. So I'm just going to keep this. Um, yeah. Um, hold on. Yeah, we want to go back to Photoshop. Just smooth it out a little bit. Hopefully that helps. We could probably even do that manual, manually. But, uh, so what we can do is we can duplicate this layer. So we have one as a backup. We can then use the smooth brush and just smooth everything except for these uh, veins. There you go, just smoothing it. Oh, we can probably, oh, we can do something else. We could just use the smooth brush. We can set it to 100. Okay, that works. Increase the size. Just, first of all, we're just gonna smooth everything. Like that. This one as well. And then we can use a mask to bring back these very defined veins are they called veins or is there like a specific name for these uh for these leaf yeah for the, these these lines there now we can bring back some detail Oh, this is too big.
Okay. We're coming to an end with the with the leaves finally. We're coming maybe even to an end with the whole project. We're coming closer and closer to the final image. Okay, I'm just going to do these that branch out from the main uh, vein. Oh. Okay. This side maybe as well. We're not going to see it that much, but just to be sure. Just in case. There you go. The other ones we don't really see, so we're just going to leave it there. Let's save this one as well. Um, I'm going to make it PSD. Let's call it Bump Blur version 1A. The MSI Creator Award is a competition, a art competition, hosted by MSI, where you have, or the theme for the competition is technology meets aesthetics. Um, the categories you can participate in are 2D illustration, or no, 2D photography, um, 2D, no, yeah, 2D videography, or like editing, uh, video editing, 3D animation, and 3D like static images. Each individual category will be, um, yeah, like um, will compete in itself. No, like, oh, well, this video edit looks better than this 3D animation. That doesn't really make sense. So yeah, they're, they're going to be split. And you can probably imagine which one we will participate in. We're gonna look at look at all the particip like uh, all the submissions probably tomorrow when we finish the whole thing. Hopefully, maybe tomorrow, maybe f Saturday. We'll see how far we get tomorrow. Although, if we do post production or like final touches tomorrow, we would probably do it on Saturday. We'll see. Leave it. There you go. Okay, let's let's apply the texture the blur hopefully the blur actually worked let's see yeah see now they're just a little bit are they i think they're a little bit less uh pixelated <laughs> i mean it's kind of part of the part of the leaf so yeah i think it's okay we could also just go into the wait where's my there it is we can go in here and then just increase the bump to make them smoother. But then we remove a lot of detail. So I kind of like it um, just like this. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. <clears throat> but it's not done yet. We have to do a few more uh, changes. Uh, it looks too clean. So we're just going to grab this texture. We're going to apply it to the roughness as well. Um, what is even in here right now? Oh, okay. What is the, what does that look like? Do we need that? I don't think so. What does it look like without? Okay. You know what? I'm going to move it back. I'm just going to add. We need the color mix RGB node. We can then set it to multiply to add even more roughness onto the already existing roughness texture. What does it look like right here? Yeah, so black means it's going to be rougher. No, it's going to be shinier, right? So we have to invert it again. Color invert. White means very, very rough. Um black means very very shiny so if you move these two together you can see now the texture actually changed this is the 
you know oh we can actually compare the two now it's still plugged into the roughness map i mean roughness uh plug or socket that's solely the leaf texture this one's the other one a mix between the two looks like this i want to do a few adjustments though we need another color ramp put that in there i want to um i want to remove most of the black part i actually want to increase the black value the minimum roughness that we should have is probably like 0.3 Let's see what we have in here. This is with the brightest value. 0 0.1. No, hold on. This one. 0 0.07. Okay. Okay, I'm curious what it looks like now. Okay, so with this color ramp, we can kind of define the roughness values a little bit more. For example, if we move this higher, we can see it gets rougher and rougher. No, hold on. I could. Wait. <laughs> what is happening? I'm confused. Uh... Okay, I'm going to put this in there first just to see what it looks like. Okay, so now we can customize it better. <clears throat> so white means super shiny. The problem is we have to we had we converted it, so white means actually yeah, super shiny. Usually it means very rough. So no reflections at all. So this is no reflection at all. It looks kind of like a sponge. <laughs> and this is a full reflection. If we move this one lower though, we can see some actual reflections. There you go. This is reflective now. So I want to change this texture first. I want to crunch down these values. I'm, I just want to make special parts or like certain parts rougher. So we kind of have to... Okay, let's look at this. So black means shiny. So we have to actually... Wait. I want to invert this. No, I, I want to... There you go. Yeah, move this higher. There you go. So the main part can be very rough. The rest can be kind of shiny like this. So if you plug that in now, which is already plugged in, we can see what it looks like. We can kind of customize it a little bit more. Maybe remove some of that roughness. Also, it doesn't have to be perfectly rough. We can maybe push it down a little bit. Okay, this one also doesn't have to be perfectly shiny, so we're going to bring it back up a little bit. See, we've added some, some roughness structure as well. These, these veins are more rough than the leaves themselves. Although I'm not quite happy with it yet. Of course, there's some light on this texture, which kind of... It makes it not like perfect for roughness maps, or to use as a roughness map, but we could probably work with this it doesn't have to be perfect so we can still use it okay we kind of have to play around with these values we also want to mix it with this one so if you plug that in now we can see <laughs> it looks very different okay <clears throat> oh yeah, that's perfect. Hold on. Oh, 
Okay. I think the strength is too high now. I think we have to... Oh, we can change the distance as well. What about 0.1? Maybe even less. Oh. I think changing the distance helps as well. Okay. We can especially see it from here. Some parts are rougher than other parts, which gives it a more natural look. Although they're not perfect. Hold on. I also want to bring back the other bump map, this one. So we, we need to combine the two, which isn't hard. We just move them over here. We want to combine them. So we need the color mix RGB note. If you want to combine two bump notes, I mean bump maps, we just, we you, you, all you need is a mix, no mix RGB note with a multiply note, mix mode. Put both colors in there. I mean, both textures, set it to one. And then put that into the height and now we have the other one in there as well it looks kind of weird i think we've removed all of the first texture what happened I think that's a good mix. Or is it? Do we even need the second? I don't think so. We can just remove it. We can just work with the first one. Like the, the actual leaf bump map. Oh. Yeah, I think that's okay. So there's one more thing that I want to add. The color has to change a little bit. I want to actually go to material preview. I think sometimes you can see the materials better in material preview because they're it's called material preview. <laughs> but um, yeah, now you can see what it looks like. They're kind of intersecting with each other. I don't really know why, but that's just how it is. So they're just too pure <laughs> in terms of color. There's no discoloration. So I want to add some discoloration as well. So we need to use another mix RGB node. We're going to set it to multiply factor one put it in there so now you can see if we set it to white nothing happens if we set it to black though it's going to be black so using the leaf texture we can actually make parts of the image or parts of this gold uh, darker which is exactly what i want to do so we're going to need another color ramp there you go put that right there Connected to the mix RDB node. You can see what happens. Ah, can you see it? We can probably increase the blacks a little bit. Ah, there it is. Look at that. It's too strong right now, so we have to do a few ch changes. One thing we can do is we can set it to B spline, which smooths the black, like the transition. If we move this handle over here, we can see there's a smoother transition. Oh, look at that. We get some wear and tear in there. Not too much though. Okay, let's see. Let's see what it looks like in rendered view. I think that's too strong. We can bring it back uh, over here. So that's pure gold. That's slightly dirty gold. <laughs> we should probably use the dirt that we've added as the roughness map, actually. 
So what we could do is we can just still use this one, but we bring it back to its original values. We just plug in this node. Hopefully that works how I want it to work. Now it's rougher in the areas where it's darker, which kind of works together. Like where there's dirt, there's more like the surface isn't as smooth or as reflective. Okay, now it doesn't really work how I want it to work. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna add vision poop. Maybe there's an add-on for that. <laughs> So one thing you always have to keep in mind with um, reflective and also transparent materials is the more reflective it is, the more it is reliant on the surrounding. So with this, um, with this scene, for example, the only thing that is really lighting up the scene are three lights or even two. I don't even know. I think two. Uh, yeah, two lights. So that's why this part down here is like so super black. If we would bring in an like an HDRI, wait, let's do that real quick, just to test it. It's gonna be way different. So let's use this one. See, now it's actually, it actually has reflections. So of course, if you have a reflective object, the reflective object, it looks like horrible if there's nothing it can reflect. If it's just pure black, it's just going to look pure black. Um, so it also depends on which object, I mean, which scene you use. If you, for example, use like a night scene, it looks. It also looks different. If you use a, I guess, like super sunny day, yeah, it just looks so different. So that's something I actually just recently realized, um, but it's very important when you work with ice or glass or gold, for example. That's why I'm going to make this more maybe rough than gold maybe even is. So if you make this rougher, you can see we just see more of the color because it's less, um, it's less reflective. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Let's apply the same material to the to the branches, but then remove the leaf texture. Wait, that doesn't work. Maybe. Nope, it doesn't work. Okay, let's uh we have to do a few changes, so we have to disconnect it, make a new material, let's call it uh, Laurel Branch. So we don't need this texture anymore. I think it would have been better if we would have just if I would have just copied the original gold texture or gold material, but well, whatever. Now we're here. <laughs> okay, hold on. Where's my gold? There it is. Well, there it is. <laughs> okay.
So what does it look like now? Okay, okay, okay. Loading. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Acceptable. Although the bump map is too small. I mean, too big. You can see there's no, I guess, imperfection. So we have to change the scale. Make it, I guess, bigger. Wait, hold on. Where's the texture? <laughs> the texture is just missing now. I don't know where it is. <laughs> Maybe we just have to reconnect it. I mean, uh, yeah, reconnect it. There it is. Is it the roughness? Yeah. Oh no, that's just the, the color. so much fiddling here i just want to <laughs> you know i could also just make a noise noise texture to create some sort of bump i think that would have been easier rather than using this oh i know why it's not working there you go we have to unwrap it there you go there it is Okay, that's way too big, so we have to make it smaller. Okay. I'm just gonna try it again. <laughs> I'm just going to copy the same material. Oh. oh. Yeah, I mean, if that works, then put that in here. There you go. That's the first one. We could probably even bring in some more roughness because this is like a branch. There you go. We then use it on the same on the other side as well, which was called Laurel Branch. Okay, perfect. This one has to be unwrapped as well. There you go. Okay, perfect. The last thing is this wrapping. <laughs> Okay, so I have a fabric shader, so we could probably use that. Um, uh, let me add it real quick. Actually, I actually have it in here already. It's called. No, this one is actually. Oh, actually no. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna use another one. I have multiple procedural textures or shaders for um, fabric. Uh, I already have one in here, but the one I have in here is quite. I guess clean I want to have something more like how do you call it like the uh, the um, band-aid structure like a band-aid band material procedural fabric oh. let's use the last one it's called the weaver 
Okay. Guess we have to unwrap it. Oh. Okay, hold on. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Oh, this looks pretty good, but it's too big. Let's do a few changes. If you ever lose yourself in the node interface, so for example, if you move somewhere else and you can't find your nodes anymore, you can press the comma or in, like remove or the button next to zero on your numpad to go back to your notes if if it does work you press a and then the same and then you should go back to your note setup Can we somehow rotate it? I actually don't like the color. What color should we use? Black? White? I think white's the best. Yeah, I like this. There you go. Maybe not pure white. That's better. Okay, the threads don't really follow the flow, so I'm just gonna rotate them a little bit if I can. Can I? I don't know. <clears throat> can I go in here? Hold on, okay. <laughs> I have no idea where I have to go for it to rotate. Oh, we could probably do that in the UV. Hold on. UV, there you go. Oh, this one probably, right? Yeah. Oh. There you go. Isn't that looking great? So let's re let's add it to the other ones as well. Okay, this one we probably have to straighten. Shouldn't be a big deal though. Let's see. First of all, I'm going to apply it. Weaver. Yeah, this one looks weird. <laughs> Although, no, it looks pretty good from here. Yeah, I like it. I am liking it. Let's do the next one. Mark seam, unwrap. There you go. Yeah, yeah, looks good, looks good. Let's do one more. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Let's look at it in rendered view. Yeah, I think that's good. Can we increase the bump? We can. No, we can't. No, yeah, we can. No, we can. Okay. 
Oh, hold on, we can. Uh, okay, maybe not. I don't really get this. <laughs> Oh, that's this, this that's displacement. That's why. Let's add the same texture as a bump map. Hopefully that works. Uh, there you go. Easy. Now it looks even more fibery. <laughs> We could maybe give it some sort of like roughness map as well, but I kind of want to leave this alone. I don't want to mess with it. Okay, let's let's try black. And then if that doesn't look good, then we could leave it white. Oh, <laughs> zebra. <laughs> I think black looks better. White kind of sticks out and black kind of looks better f like with this gold uh, material. Oh, maybe not pure black. Yeah, kind of, like a little bit. Okay. I think it's time for a final review. Oh, we have to do one more stuff. One more thing, one more thing. Which is in the retopology section. We have these covers. Let's call them... Oh arm cup l and arm cup r uh okay yeah do i want to risk going in <laughs> oh well then i can yeah okay <clears throat> I think I want to, hmm, what color should this be? Maybe gold, gold maybe might be too much. Let's see. Uh, where am I? There you go. There you go. Material lighting test. What? <laughs> Hello? Okay. Let's change the texture. What about gold? that too much gold maybe change it to white maybe white looks better cover itself where is it cover of course we have to make a new cover if we want to use white i think gold looks better i don't think we want to introduce another color like silver for example so if we use gold Do it on the other side as well. Wait, there it is. There you go. Oh. There you go. <clears throat> I think we have to change the lighting a little bit. It looks too... It doesn't really highlight the gold 
maybe we have to change make the gold less shiny maybe that's why so if we separate this let's call let's make another separation call it um gold cup Yeah, that's better. Wait, is there still a an HRI applied? No. Bring it back to four. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be it for today. We've uh, finished the whole model. Um, now we're going to go back to the lighting. I think. So we set up the lighting when we had the sculpt, which was darker. Um, and now we kind of have to adjust probably just the light. Uh, we have to adjust the lighting because the color change changed. Um, and we also, I think I was, I want to make this gold, especially the, what is it called again? The, <laughs> the wreath a little bit more visible. It's like very black on the, on the sides, which is because there's no light or anything in the background. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me hide the light. Actually, we can try the other one, the other lighting as well. Yeah, this one, this one works a little bit better because there's just light coming from multiple sides. Um, I want to try an HRI real quick. So this one's the first one. Okay. What about maybe like something like this? Okay, this one's quite weird but you can see the the laurels way better now maybe this one they're quite dark maybe if we could even use an hdri we'll see that would make everything a whole lot easier like this one for example this doesn't really highlight like the curves maybe or like the the yeah the the curves or whatever you want to call them there you go yeah so tomorrow we're going to work on the lighting oh hold on look at that wait something happened it's not why is it so weird it's so grayed out Hmm, that's weird. I think that's just the, the HRI. Okay, yeah, we're gonna work on the lighting tomorrow. And we'll finish the whole sculpt. Maybe I'll decide to work a little bit more on the cloth on Saturday, just because it's it's so low low quality i guess we can probably put in some more detail um maybe we can even put it into one stream basically adding some more detail to the cloth and also finishing the look um yeah but we're gonna do that um 
Uh, yeah, we're going to continue working on this tomorrow. Same time. Um, hope you enjoyed today. Thank you for joining. Maybe you learned something new with me. <clears throat> um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for joining. Thanks for listening. Thanks for chatting. Thanks for everything. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And yeah. Take care. <laughs>